Hello and welcome to UK Versus. We are doing the dramatic conclusion to our one year anniversary. Uh, due to how long everything went over and uh, we've had to move some of it back. And thanks to pre-releases being delayed a bit further. Although packs did arrive at the weekend which is really really cool. We won't expect them until Monday. <clears throat> We're going live now to go over the character creation uh, cards. Uh, how have you been, Richard? Yeah, I mean, I'm all good. Uh, <coughs> apart from being an old man, I've got my back in today. <laughs> uh, which I, mean, I think is solely just, just being old. But yeah, all good. Um, yeah, so our, our locals got their, <clears throat> got their delivery in on Saturday. Unfortunately, it was a bit too late to sort of arrange for staff and all that malarkey to do the pre-release again today. So I think it's next week now. Um, but I was able to pick up my two boxes, obviously open one of them on stream, and then, uh, yeah, let the uh, the boy open the other one. Yeah, it was, we've been seeing mm. lots of box openings going down. Uh, mm. We've seen lots of people being put, lots of crumbs being pulled. Congratulations to uh, Revy in town for pulling El Chaco, which they were after. Uh, big shout out to Pippa, who opened up a Momo. <clears throat> well, their uh, girlfriend opened up a uh, Momo, but, but it still mm. counts. Uh, oh, yeah, it's okay. I'm looking for. I'm looking for to get my boxes. No idea when they're actually going to show up because Ka uh, I don't think Cad Goblin got their stuff yet. But it'll probably show up tomorrow. Yeah, I imagine most UK places are getting their stuff over the the next few days. Um, so go. yeah, I mean, it may well have been a case of it might have been delivered yesterday, but maybe they just don't work weekends that sort of thing. Because I don't know if they've got a, a bricks and mortar place or anything like that. So. Yeah, I got local. Um, I got local qualifiers tomorrow, which the locals are a bit dis uh, displeased about because they booked it for the twentieth because the initial release date of Go Power was the seventeenth. So we could be mm. the first local qualifier to use Go Power, and our TO could use Merco, and now he's got to wait a month. Awkward. It's very awkward, but it's gonna be cool. Uh, everyone just we've got we've got the announcements that. Uh, LP is disappearing and it's all CP now. Uh, everyone's mm -hmm. sort of like dialed back the competitiveness. I was just asking for lists. I think we're going to have a Faye uh, coming in. Uh, I think someone else is saying they're going to build some fun. I think uh, Six just got a Yakuza tattoo on his back, so he's going to be you know, playing one of the overhaul guys. Well, I mean, it was just a, a big sort of oriental style like asian style kind of dragon was it i think Fish, but so, yeah. sea serpent sort of thing, yeah 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 um still counts it's still like a yeah. tattoo but the big thing is we hosted our character creation competition uh, a few people didn't understand this was creating characters for myself and richard so there were some people that like did uh, Monoma Two and Eri, uh, as well as some other cool. They, they were cool uh, concepts, but unfortunately they were just deleted because if I, I didn't want to go through the process of going, oh, who could I put this under for me? Richard, I was like, no, I'm just gonna delete it because uh, I'll just give Richard all the shit ones and I'll have all the powerful ones. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole point was to design us, so you know, <clears throat> gotta. Got to read read the uh, read the title because so, you know I'm pretty sure it was clear in what you put out there. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah, so we have two hourly promos. We have <coughs> uh, an hourly season one pro uh, playmat to give away. Uh, mm -hmm. We have our playmat to give away, uh, like the UK versus playmat to give away, as well as a. Bunch of other stuff that we still have left over from last week. Okay, so I think maybe we do an overall winner for your best design, an overall winner for my best design, and then maybe a funniest uh, for both of us. So um, I was going to suggest uh, my the what my favorite, your favorite, and a community favorite stuff so from the people in chat. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm going to... Oh, I should have got the bot ready. Uh, which which bot was I even using last time? Uh, oh, that's going to bug me. 
I can't remember what bot I used last week. Because so I was going to put our playmat up in just into the giveaway sort of thing. Okay. But, and yeah, maybe like a almost like a random door prize. So just like yeah. a random or you know, everyone that entered. Um, exactly. But yeah, like my, 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 my idea for judging would be, <sighs> sort of, you know, several factors. So um, how much they represent us. Uh, how good the character is, how funny the idea is. Um, and yeah, just like an overall, um, just sort of look at those sort of three things, mainly from my perspective. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. Uh, so I'm just going to take you one chat. Oh yeah, so we're going to just go over it. We'll go, as Richard said, abilities that more fall in line with us as people, uh, then we'll have also along with the names and stuff like that, cards that just go, speak to us as players and how we're seen by the community, which is kind of, kind of cool, uh, as well as uh, abilities that are abilities that make sense, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll just we'll have to have a look at them and then just sort of you know make some judgments. Obviously, I guess uh, you in theory know who did each one, but I don't. So yeah, that, um, that, I purposely kept uh, the names of everyone who did them out. Mm -hmm. But if you want to know, I can tell you who did what when. No, no, no. We'll find out. We'll, we'll do that. You know that at the end, but not while we're we're going yeah. through them. I didn't want there to be any subconscious bi subconscious biases. Yeah, exactly. So, for example, like you know, me deliberately not liking Steve's one, for example. You know, <laughs> I mean, he did put SLB on it, mm -hmm. and then immediately messaged me going, "It's not what you think when you put SLB." I was like, "Yeah, okay, whatever." Uh. I've, I did, uh, there was a couple that came in during the night, one of which was like Keenan's, and I did have a, a speak with Keenan's going, chances are Richard's going to shoot that one down, but it's very, very cool. Yeah, I mean, just enter them, like, you know, it's not like you're doing anything with these cards, they may, like, they're supposed to be fun, and if they're overpowered, they're overpowered, it doesn't matter. Okay, so these are not in numerical order, because for some reason, non uh, OBS loaded them, like, uh, 10 to 44, then 1 to 9. Okay. Uh, wait, no, he starts at 13 for some reason. Why do you start at 13? Weird. Okay. But yeah. <clears throat> so, we're going to start off with uh, number 13, which is a design for me. We have Brett Pendragon, Lord of Chaos. Uh, with the keyword traits UK versus and number seven. This is a 27 ha uh, health with six hander. Uh, after your arrival, modifies the speed or damage of your attack. Oh, of your an attack. Okay. Uh, of an attack. Ready this character. Enhance. Commit. Add the top card of your deck to your momentum. Enhance. Commit. Discard or a block from your card pool. Uh, this attack gets minus two speed or damage. Uh, form once per game, shuffle your hand into your deck and draw up to your printed hand size, clear all cards from your card pool. Okay, and he's got the Chaos Void and Good symbols. Yes, Chaos Void and Good. I don't know, okay. why, they, I don't know why, why they gave me good, but hey, I'm a good boy. Yeah, that's fair. <clears throat> oh, uh, Storm of Blades is SLB. That's quite, I, I get I get where that's coming from now. Yeah. Um, okay. So, how do I want to speed damage of your attack ready this character? Okay. I think, so, I think that's a little bit too powerful in all honesty. Uh, maybe, but like, what are you doing with it? You're just getting a momentum every time. That's okay. Discarding a block from a card pool, this attack gets minus two speed or damage. That's fine because... Well, no, it's whenever my rival modifies the speed or damage of an attack. So I commit, no. get momentum. So this is obviously where, I don't know whether that's a typo, whether that's like the translation from the Excel into this. Uh, um, so number 13, they, probably, they might even be in here. Uh, um, probably not. Uh, 
I would say I'm gonna because the word your is there. I would say it's your attack, and that makes more sense. So you can, you don't get to like repeatedly do the discarding a block on defense because that's gonna be bonkers. Uh, yeah, this was done. Okay, and. Yeah, no, it's just, it's in the XL as your an attack, so. Yeah, so uh, let's say it's your attack, okay? And, like, um, if yeah. It, if it so, was an attack, then that's just completely busted. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume the an bit is more the typo rather than the your bit. So, you know. But then, um, uh, I'm guessing, like, that would make your enhance once per turn. Is this enhance the... commit? Where if, it, if it was a modified the speed of an attack, you could do it in your opponent's turn to ready up, enhance commit, yeah, yeah. discard a block. Yeah, so that would be too good, right? Yeah. Um, and and like there's play there, right? Without it, so like if you enhance commit on a, 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 a get a momentum, they can then not necessarily modify things you don't get to ready, and therefore use the commit on defense. Um, Let's see, it makes Dabby free pointless. It makes Hawks very bad. Um, uh, and obviously the form, um, you know, if you've you've committed to add a momentum, you know, you, it's not played well committed, so you need to have been ready later. Uh, obviously, that form is very powerful. Um, yeah, I mean... I suppose looking at it like uh in terms of I mean power it, level, it looks very powerful, right? Just constantly being able to get momentum, you know, yeah. you're obviously you're gonna do it once per attack, but still I mean um, but you look at it this way, if I, if my opponent is playing a character like Hawks or <clears throat> likes to mess with speed, if I go uh, attack momentum, attack momentum, attack momentum. Walk the dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've now got four momentum, so that's a yeah. six low for eighteen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's powerful as long as they're messing with your stats, but obviously it means you know there's a bit of there. Um, this is kind of setting the standard for the rest, so I think we should come back, back like back around. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's fine. I mean, in terms of sort of representing you, um, no, I don't know. I mean, it's got chaos, that's yeah. obvious. I, d I can't imagine there'd be any characters of you that don't have the chaos symbol. If it was a 28 health as well, because I pretty much, I pretty much directly play 28 health six handers. Yeah. Which is what I've done. But, uh, uh, yeah, okay. I mean, it's it's fine. It doesn't leap out no. to me as, as a winner so far, but... <clears throat> it isn't one that we're immediately... I'm not immediately deleting it because it's too overpowered mm -hmm. or just doesn't synchronise. Okay, let's just stop that. Uh, then we want to 15, which is Richard and Taco. Uh, universe okay. 10. Enhance, remove a copy of Richard and Taco from your stage. Discard the top 10 cards of your deck. You may play a card discard this way. Yeah, you, may, you may add a card discard way to your hand. Enhance, this tag gets plus one speed or plus one damage for every seven cards in your discard pile. Life or fire. Okay. I like it. I, I, obviously, you know, I'm a sucker for the referencing the favorite child. Um, and just, yeah, milling 10. I, I, you know, I think this is, this is knowing things I like in terms of um, I love the fire symbol and I'm a big sucker for self mill stuff. Oh yeah, uh, like I didn't read a lot of the cards, but a lot of the cards are either references to kicks or references to Stormer blades. Yeah, that is fair and, and sort of expected, right? Yeah. Uh, the life symbol is a bit odd for this one, just because it's probably one of my least favorite symbols. Um, uh, all I do enjoy an all deck. And um, obviously, it's a stacker. I'm not a huge fan of stackers, but like just being able to, you know, discard ten, add a copy of this character to my stage. It says hand or stage, which is quite nice, very powerful. Um, but in theory, you can only do that three times per game. Um, speed or damage every seven is 
Mm. I mean, uh, you say you can only do it three times, but if you're playing the life symbol, you get access to Rosewick Barrage, which lets you build a character from the remove zone. Yeah, that's true. Um... Yeah, see, I'd like... I'd prefer if it was discard a copy, just so it can so they can cycle back in and you can keep doing it. But um, to you as a player, and I don't think I, this you know, kind of speaks to how I've seen your play style. You're not really a stacker. You're not really no, a, no, no. a Miller. Um, I I am because I love Tokoyami, Right, that was the character I played for so very long. So that self mill mills in, you know, plays into Tokoyami. I I like the self mill, um, and like hit lots of battles type play. That's not um, a bad show. Uh, Apple Apple says a great way to do it is to, uh, basically put a scarring on it. Yeah. Uh. This so is... briefly circling around to that first one, how much it represents you? I probably so this is going back to yeah. the Lord of Chaos. I'd say maybe a two um, out of five. I don't know how you feel. Uh, yeah, it, from how I play, I'm going to basically just put uh, the scars on there. So I, I think I think two's more fair. It's not particularly like my play style. No. Um, how balanced is it? It felt very powerful. Um, it's not as broken as if it was an attack because you just get to essentially yeah. commit, uh, get a momentum, wait for them Maybe to... Maybe a three. Speed. I'd say a three on that one. Yeah. <clears throat> and then how much you'd like to play it? Uh, I'll let you... Because it's you, so... Honestly, if it was an attack, hell yeah, I'd give this a go because... Uh, it's got chaos, it's got chaos, and I can I can petty squabble it into the sun. If it's your attack, then I mean I can still petty squabble into the sun, but it's not quite the same. So I'd probably put it as like a free. It'd be a fun character I'd take to locals. It probably wouldn't be something mm -hmm. I played competitively. Okay. Um. So this one for me, in terms of how much it represents you, well, you. Um... I'd say it's probably at least a three, right? Like it moves into that self mill thing. Um, it references the dog. I like that. Um, if it, I, I just yeah, so yeah, so I think I go with a three. Um, in how terms, balanced is it? In terms this feels of... pretty balanced, actually. Like it, this doesn't feel busted. Uh, the one thing for me is, as a stacker, it still has a six difficulty, which I didn't put on there because they're all six difficulty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Actually, again, no, that's probably well, just one of them's a one difficulty. What the hell's going on there? Oh, no, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's so, pretty, you're, you're, like, this is a, one, this is a one difficulty character. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about the difficulty on this. Uh, I think in terms of balance, it's probably about a four. Like, in fact, maybe even, like, like I think this would be a... a a character you could happily play and stuff, so um, yeah, yeah. And then, sense. how much you'd like to play it? Yeah, I'd give this a bash, but like again, it's a stacker. I'm not a huge stacker fan, so I think I'd probably go with a three. Uh, Raven, yeah, we're going to try and go through all forty-four as, as mm -hmm. uh, while we can. Yeah, so I think a three for that one. A three. Okay, so a four, three, three. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's a three, four, three, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, moving on to the next one is one for me, which is Bet Pren Dragon All Hail Mothra. Uh, okay. Keyword trait UK versus. It's a 19 health seven hander with the abilities enhanced. Name a card type, reveal the top card of your deck. If the revealed card matches the uh, named card type, add it to your momentum. If it does not, uh, remove it. Response, discard momentum. After an attack is played, it uh, changes its zone and it gets plus one speed and damage. It's on chaos, evil, and good. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's fairly powerful in itself. I mean, but... you, yeah. 
I mean, that top ability is just um, the dabby attack, isn't it, basically? Except it doesn't remove it. Yeah. That one, so whatever you... it is. Quick burn. Uh, you don't get to... I don't think there's many cards that reveal the top card. You... card that's what dabby free sort of did for you. Uh... Yeah, it, it's the quick burn <laughs> attack, right? It... It, you, you name a card type, and if it matches, it goes yeah. to your momentum. That, yeah, especially this is quick burn on a static enhance. Mm. Uh, the response, the response feels very powerful. Yeah, I mean, changing his own plus one speed, plus one damage from momentum is probably a reasonable rate. I mean, and especially got... at response, especially at response speed, right? You've got to make that decision when you play the attack. You don't get to sort of, you know, mess around with it and do it later. Yeah. So again, it feels balanced from that perspective. Like, um, like I think this feels like a very fair character actually in terms of like the balance side of it. Um, it's yeah, it's fairly balanced. Uh, but this is uh, yeah, that was gonna. <clears throat> it is fairly balanced. Uh, the good symbol does give it access to things like. Uh, final smash, which allows you to mm -hmm. just, it, it kind of abuse that top ability as well. Uh, I think there's yeah. other cards that looks like you like stack the top of your deck. Uh, but as a 19 health seven hand, that kind of evens out a little bit. Yeah, and like you know, you're it's obviously an aggressive thing. Um, but I suppose the question here is like. Like, yeah, you get to maybe stagger momentum on every attack, and maybe you don't want to use that discard momentum for the changing the zone. Um, I think in terms of playability, it's very well balanced, and it's very synergistic hmm. with the top, with the enhance and the response. So I think that okay. is probably a, going to be a four alongside of yours. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you go ahead and make this one. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you get your input as well, so... Oh, yeah. uh, I think in, in playability, this is a four. I think this is the kind of thing people would, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, especially with the stuff going, this is definitely going to be an absolutely insane card with certain kits. Mm -hmm. But in terms of representing me as a player, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I mean, like. You know, I suppose it's an enhance from a dabby attack, right? Yeah, it's got, um, it's got the quick burn on there. It's got. The... You're not really known for seven handers. Uh, apart from Mina one. Yeah. Um. It's... Yeah, I mean, it's probably like maybe a two or three, I guess. Yeah, on that I, was... Rating. I was thinking two because. Yeah. Essentially, it's a dabby attack and one of dabby ones enhances, but without the momentum cost. I think. Discarding one momentum to change the zone and get plus one speed and damage is a power down from Mirio, which gets to... Well, it's not keyword locked, I guess, but... Yeah, it's... Um, yeah, actually, I suppose... Because Mirio gets to do it when he wants to do it. This yeah. obviously you have to make that decision, I think. <clears throat> and in the grand scheme of things, plus one, plus one isn't great, and you don't get to really do no. it turn one. Unless you're very no. lucky. Also, we don't have Dark Shadow Ruin anymore, which this would have been brilliant with Dark Shadow Ruin. Mm -hmm. uh, next, we have one for you. We have Richard Plummer Mid Gin. Keyword <laughs> trait UK versus 600 with 28 health. Uh, response once per turn after your rival plays an enhanced ability on an attack, cancel it. Uh, response after your rival draws one or more cards during the enhanced phase, they discard a card. Okay. That's not limited to once per turn, that second enhance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who this came from and whether they've ever met me, uh, met me even. Um, I think it's they're, they're just basing this around gin and like gin place. Yes. So that response uh, once per turn is obviously very gin, right? <sighs> like. Um, the, the the second in the second response is nuts. Yes. Well, now you say that draws more than one card during the enhanced phase, right? So, like, what things actually do that? Like, um, like latent skill or 
uh, read you, smash, whatever. But actually, like... I mean, it kind of shuts again, down depends. Nezu. Because <laughs> it doesn't say... It doesn't say on character yeah. effect, but what even what character affects draw multiple cards, right? Cool, but if you've got two Shivruses down, that just basically says they only get to draw one card. No. Because they're not, they're drawing one card individually on each one of them. That's again, unless it depends how the um, it depends how um, after you draws more than one card during the enhanced step. So I guess after it, I guess it comes down to whether it's one one card at a time or more than one card. So if you draw one card, it's fine. Then once they go over that, they start having to discard cards. Yeah, I, I suspect maybe. It was supposed to be the second one, where yeah, it's yeah. after your opponent draws the second or more card during the um well, it was definitely key here. One. Uh, this is why Tim Keefe turned us down doing uh the Ooh, give me a second. Okay, uh it looks like Sam Tate might be joining us a little bit in a minute, but let's go. Okay. Uh um, yeah. But yeah, I, I would it's very yeah. It's not poorly worded, it's just that needs a bit of clarification. Yeah. Because yeah, so similar to what Apple's saying, is it's like it should be a case of when they draw their second or greater card yeah. during an enhanced phase, they discard a card, right? Um, rather than, because this suggests instances of more than one. So, like I say, your latent skills, your reduce smashes, that sort of thing. Yeah, I suspect it was meant to be a second, so reduce, I'll judge it on base from the second. But... Reduce smash wouldn't count because it's not in the enhanced step. Um, yeah, that's true. We wouldn't work on that. Um, so it would be Petty Squabble, Latent Skill. Uh, there's not many. There's not many. I like to kind of drops it down a lot. If it, if it was like one, if it was uh, a, a second or greater, if this is a second or greater card your opponent's drawn this enhanced step, they mm. discard a card. Yeah. So I'll judge it based on the second one. You yeah. know, wording sometimes tough. So, um, Obviously, I do love some gin. Um, I'm not really an Earth gamer um, or air, but that's fine. Um, <clears throat> after you play Enhanced Speed on Attack, cancel it. Not even a commit cost, so that's... Um... Oh, yeah, Mox Strike kind of works. I mean... No, I mean, again, even with this wording, Mox Strike wouldn't have worked, right? <clears throat> uh... Because they're individual instances, yeah, so yeah. mop strikes wouldn't have mattered. But um, uh, I mean, you see that the the, the top the top response is once per turn. It says play an ability on an attack, so it would only work in your yeah. rival's turn anyway because it doesn't say attack card, so you can't do it on like blocks with break and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it just like Jin does it, yeah. but it has to commit, has to commit and yeah. also has to be less than speed, whereas this doesn't. Um, yeah. So pretty powerful. Um, so in terms of representing me, um, I mean, I do like telling people no, uh, but I, it's probably a two. I, I like killing people more than anything. So um, how balanced it is, uh, feel like it doesn't mess with speed like gin. Um, like it feels reasonable. It's really uh, so fair. Again, probably, yeah, I'd probably say a three. Like it doesn't give any stats or anything, so it's probably fine. Um, and then how much I'd like to play it? It's probably a two. This doesn't feel like a very me character. That's fair. I I do, Matt. Like my favorite characters are like Tokiyami and so, Jiro. Whatever like, we. Uh, for those that stick around and watch our like tier lists or character reviews, uh, the first thing that will come up with his mouth, mouth is doesn't give stats on faces trash. Well, that's not quite true. Uh, it's an ad lib. Yeah. Um, uh, this one's a bit of a mad, uh, a bit of a mouthful. I think this is just someone trying to circumvent the rules. Okay. So basically, this is uh, a myth a. The Rag, Mythical Spirit, Brackets, Bet Pen Dragon. Uh, at the start of your game, search your deck for one copy of this character. Uh, place it under, basically build it in on this character. Uh, if this game were to end for you, uh, 
due to you farm below one health. Instead, remove one character and continue play. Uh, increase, uh, it, but it becomes a five hander. Uh, with forty health and no abilities, your opponent's attacks played into uh, into the capital do not cause damage to his character unless they have they are a spell card or have the word spirit in the name. Damage caused by uh, by effects. Uh, damage caused by effects after the attack resolve still cause damage as normal. Right. So there's ten health for three hander. That's a lot of words. It's a lot of words. Uh, it feels very Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know what the the DDRAIG is a reference to. No idea. I think it's just. Uh, I think it it might just be. I actually it might just be a way to circumvent the rules of uh, it having to be designed for us. Uh, outside of like this competition, this seems like a very cool idea. It seems very Ghidorah, which is a very powerful card in its own right. Yeah, I was trying to see if there's like, is there an anagram there, or is it the background? Is it you know backwards like gr da da? No. Um, but yeah, for me, it, the thing that kind of leads to it trying to be a circle of each other rules is the keywords because it hasn't got the UK verses or Dabby guy or like the ones that other people put in. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't think this represents uh, you at yeah. all, really. And as, as Clark so put it, uh, he got bored one second into listening to me read it, so trying to read it himself. There's a mm. lot of words. It it's oh, a okay. very cool. It's a very very cool character. Don't get me wrong. And if the person here, well, I'm not. We're not trying to like rip into you for it. It just feels like you had this this like character design. And you stuck my name on it to get it into the competition. Yes. Uh, yeah. So White Raven Gaming um, is saying he believes that uh, DD Ray Drag is Welsh Dragon, which would oh. make sense. Yeah, it'd, um, it'd be a cool PVE character. Yeah. Um, uh, in terms of representing me, this is definitely a one. This has got nothing to do with me or what how I play or my abilities. Uh, balance wise, this is a one because uh, if your deck doesn't have a spell or a spirit card in, you you literally can't win the game. Yeah. You need for that bottom ability, you need a some some kind of co very low cost your opponent can play to add the keyword to them. So like your opponent may commit one foundation. Yeah, to add... like there's there's a good percentage of decks that just literally can't beat this card. And but but this card then can't win on the swing back because they're only drawing three cards a turn. That's so it. if you're not playing it's... any of Yusuke's cards or any of Jester's cards, you don't get to win the game. Yeah, and like I say, you're only a three hander, so you can spend some turns building up foundations, and like they can never kill you anyway. Yeah. But then it's like, well, as your opponent, it's like, well, I just need to hold three blocks. You can never beat me. The the only so... yeah the two ways around it are, uh, this character needs to take damage at the beginning of the turn. Or you need a way to give your opponent. Your opponent needs a way to add those keywords to their attacks. Or oh, it just becomes a you both build one pass and over decks out first. Like it's yeah no. This is a this is a one. I'm, I'm fairly certain on balance and. Um... And as Apple says, like if you're playing evil, you just don't get to win. Yeah, yeah. Balance wise, this is a one, and uh, and and I'm I'm afraid to say my desire to play this is also oh, a one. My desire to play this is a five because I can't lose. That's fair. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can settle on a three. We'll split the difference uh, between a three and my desire, to, my desire to play a deck that I physically can't lose is yeah. definitely a, far, a three. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm just checking, just going in to see if. Nope, no messages, cool. Um, but, but yeah, no, very cool design to whoever designed it, but not. My kind of play style at all. Yeah. Uh, we got on to number 18. Uh, Brett Pendragon, the Dabby guy. Trait UK versus. 33 health for a five hander. Uh, enhance, discard one Dabby card from your rival's. Uh, look. Discard one Dabby oh, card. One your rival commits one card in their stage. Freeze one rival asset or foundation. 
I mean, I like it so far because you know they've obviously tapped into your love of lock lock and just being making games uh, miserable. Enhance, remove three damage cards from your discard. This attack gets plus two speed, plus two damage. Draw one card. Farm once per game. If you uh, if you uh, if there are ten or more damage cards removed, commit. Uh, uh, if there are ten or more, oh, if there are ten or more damage cards removed, <laughs> commit and freeze all cards in your arrival stage. This effect cannot be cancelled. Okay, I mean already, I like it. Um, uh, my I so I only have one downside with this. Mm. What is a dabby card? Is, are you talking character card? Are we talking? Oh, well, it must be characters, right? I, again, I think the assumption would be it be characters. Well, because it, because of like the. Uh, apostrophes, you know, could it mean also dabby identity cards? That is fair. Um, but get... I think I think all, all the other ones like this are character based, yeah. so I think it's safe to assume it means character. Um, I like it, I like the design immediately. Like, uh, you know, discarding a card to do lock lock things that seems very you, yeah, because you like making people miserable. Uh, like removing cards in the game, like just to get plus two speed, plus two damage, and draw a card seems quite nice. Um, you know, you've but you can effectively... only do that essentially, you can only do that four times, not even four times. You, you can, uh, you, what, how many dabbies are there? There's four, there's right? Three. There's three dabbies, dabby one, dabby two, dabby three. Oh, I thought there were four. No, there's only three mm. because the last okay. one came out, the last one came out in jet mode. Yeah, I thought that was Dabby 4 for some reason, but no, it's Dabby 3, isn't it? So you can, in theory, include 12 Dabby cards, and you need to get all of them out in order to once per game, right? Yeah, I, basically, uh, I need to get the majority of them removed to do that, which isn't... It, it, that's not impossible, especially no. with uh, cycling and stuff like that, because you... And it is got, a very powerful effect, right? Yeah. No, so it's, um, not, it's not only commit, it's commit and free, so essentially they lose their next yeah. turn as well. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe removing three is a little too harsh. Maybe if that was a remove two. Um, I think if, because then you can, if this was you can a seven-hander instead of a five-hander, I'd be more down. Mm. But essentially, I have, to, uh, I have to hold character cards in my hand. And I don't even get to block with them, which means I'm also going to be taking damage. Because in my opponent's turn, I discard the dabby card, I commit a free, I commit a card, and I can freeze it. Mm. But then I'm down a block. The five, yeah. the five, the five hander is the killer for me. If this was a seven hander, I can I can afford, and I'm going to see more of my deck quickly, so I can start to fill these things. Yeah, I like that. I, yeah, I think I like you know I like the idea of. Uh, playing it being either a six or seven hander, and I think because there's effectively only t you can play a maximum of 12 dabby cards, right? It's yeah, 12 dabby characters. Um, then you need to do that, you need to get all of them out through that enhanced remove realistically in order to do your once per game. So, I think I like the idea of <clears throat> either toning down the 10. To make it a little bit easier, or maybe making it uh, probably enhance remove two dabbies from your discard. Um, uh, enhance remove two dabbies would be cool, uh, but I was yeah I was thinking even make it a seven hander and uh, uh, put a static tech that this character counts as a dabby for character entity, so that yeah, I can run okay. fifteen. Yeah, uh, just gonna... yeah, I could live. I could go with that. Hello, Sam Tate, connoisseur of hey, character he's... creation. What's up? Hey, so, Sam. We're just nice going through a few characters that we've got. A minute, have you got the uh, stream open? Uh, no, give me just a minute here. No problem. So the card we're currently looking at the minute is uh, Brent Pendragon, that dabby guy. We have enhanced discard one dabby card for uh, your rival commits oh. one card in a stage. Uh, and then I... Get to freeze one rival asset of foundation. Uh, enhance... let, 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 let him read it for himself, but right. I think we should give the man a chance to introduce himself to oh, our, our lovely stream first. 
Yeah, I didn't know you guys were were live streaming it. You said recording, so I thought we were oh. going to be. Oh no, so yeah, we, 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 when we say recording, you always be live stream. Uh, so while Sam's just getting set up, this is Sam Tate's commentary uh, extraordinaire for UVS for events. Uh, connoisseur of character creations to the point where Nicholas Reagan, world champion, had to impose a limit on how many cards you can submit because I believe Sam tried to submit a full kit for every Pokemon in existence. <laughs> Not, well, like 10 of them, yeah. 10 of them. Uh, Sam loves these kinds yeah. of competitions and unfortunately missed our announcement and I completely forgot to tell him about it because I'm a bad friend. Yeah, I mean, you gotta you gotta make a video, right? You're a content creator. You gotta make a video for it. We announced it like repeatedly during our uh, when we had when we were talking with Tim Keith. Oh, okay, okay. Because <laughs> Tim was I saying see. that he's too harsh for these kinds of things because uh, he sees a lot of fan created cards and he gets that he gets quite annoyed with them because they're poorly worded. <laughs> Okay. So how many how many have I missed? Have I missed a bunch? Uh you've missed five of the six one here. Oh, that makes sense. So uh, in terms of the way we the time zone still got me somehow. Yeah, the yeah, the what the only real one you've missed that of significant power was one that could only be dealt damaged by spirit or spell cards, which you said was too powerful. Gotcha. <laughs> So we're, we're judging this out of five on three categories. Uh, so the first one is how much it represents us. So whether that's Brett or myself. The second one is how balanced the uh, the card is. And then the third one is just like how much you'd like to play it. Okay. So accuracy, uh, balance, and enjoyment, basically. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Okay. I got the the stream open now. I see the five thirty three Dobby guy. Yeah, that's that's what we're currently just in here. Yeah. Mm. What we're just what we're saying is we've clarified that Dobby just identifies Dobby character cards, not just any card that's got Dobby's face on it. Right, right, right. And we're just talking about whether it's too hard to fulfill the once per game being a five hander. Yeah, because you only get, like, what, 12 Dobbies in your whole deck right now? Yeah, yeah, you've got 12 Dobbies in the entire deck, and the Enhance doesn't let you draw or block, so you're going down a card to freeze a foundation, but, so you're losing a block there. Uh, okay. And as a 500, you have to be, basically being told to hold on to those character cards as well. So, yeah, we're, so what we were saying is there's two things, well, maybe three things we'd like to see. Either this being a six or seven hander. Secondly, it probably should have had a static that says this counts as a dabby. Um, mm, so this. And then thirdly, I think the enhance should have been enhanced removed two. So you don't need to do it five times to kick off your once per game. Yeah. Yeah. That's the the math doesn't line up perfectly right you do the yeah. ants three times and you you still got to find a different way to remove but they have added some cool and interesting ways to remove cards like the uh the new god i think it's a godzilla card where you remove one for minus one speed that's like a huge enabler for any yeah. kind of strategy like this so with the current card pool this seems pretty tough but i think that there's a lot of avenues for this to grow especially if they print two more dobbies you know and you can have like 20 in your deck like yeah. we're good to go well the main, yeah. the main issue that is by the time they print two more dobbies uh dobby two, dobby one will have rotated out oh that's true <laughs> that's true yeah. so there's a lot of things to consider this is why if you ever win like a major event for universes and you get to like make yourself into a character card there's a lot of things to consider because most people like let's be honest there's a lot of people who, who build their their character card around like a really specific combo that they like and then once that combo rotates their character kind of you know floats aimlessly so you really got to consider like 
if my card comes out when this card rotates, you know, how long am I really going to want to play this character? I'm really, that's why I'm really intrigued to see what Nick's done with his character, because I imagine that's the kind of thing Nick would have taken into account. I, not building it around a specific combo, but building it around a kind of archetype he likes to play for the future. Yeah, he's been posting his designs. Have you seen what he's trying to pitch? I'm not, no. It's it's kind of similar to this actually, and like um, it's like uh, after it's like you remove cards from the top of your deck to get speed and damage. Um, similar to I think it's Kiryu, the new Mecha Godzilla character. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he's also a five hander, but then he has an ability where after he removes cards, he can play abilities on them. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, isn't that because that's is that like an old character that he really likes? It's like four different old characters stitched together. Okay. It kind of reminds me of it kind of reminds me of Dabby Two with the removing for damage and then be able to uh, discard a uh, remove an action to pick up another action. Yeah, exactly. And so the the main point is he like had this character design come up, and then the cure you got revealed, and he's like, oh well, now this you know this might not be approved right because it might be a little too similar removing for the same style of stats but then they also made the card that removes a card from your star pile for cost and the way his character was written that would be like super duper good because when he removes cards he gets to play abilities on them right yeah. hmm. so sometimes you get blindsided by like a design that makes your character like way too good and I think this Dobby guy this Brett Pendragon character has a huge potential for just like any sort of character grabbers to become really, really good. Because once you have like flip, pick up a character card from your discard pile, you basically have, you know, it's probably like a one difficulty foundation that's going to just read flip your rival commits a card and freeze one. Yeah. And that's really good. Yeah. Uh, for me, that just. Yeah. The big drawback is, like you're saying, Dabbies do rotate, so it depends on how playable this is. If we don't get... We've not got a Dabby here now, so if we don't get another Dabby next year, we're down to three, four Dabby... Uh, one Dabby card after that. Yeah. But, uh, I guess... Go on, I guess on my end, I have to kind of trust you guys with the how much does this represent myself category, because I don't know if I can truly answer that one. So during the HLC interview, when they asked me what kind of character I would want to create, it was one that would utilize other Dabby cards. Uh, so I'm going to put it as right. a five because it does utilize other Dabby cards, which is what I said. I was more thinking yeah, like a, I was more thinking like an All Might four situation where you just in where I just take the abilities of other Dabbies. Uh, but this is mm. still this is more playing into as Richard said. Uh, mm. My love of playing thing, of control decks like Lock Lock, like Midnight Two, which I'm look, really looking forward to getting hold of. Yeah, you were playing a lot of Lock Lock. I still think that character is like vastly underrated after having played Chu, which has a very similar <laughs> ability. I was gonna play a LQ tomorrow, but some of my locals are still traumatized from the last time I played it, and they had 14 foundations and still couldn't do anything. <laughs> Yeah, the two uh, decks are really sweet when they get rolling. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I've so, got you guys doing great for this design right here. Yeah, we're doing yeah, great for this so, over here. Uh, so how, how, how... Let's go with a five on representation to how balanced it is. This feels like about a four. Like, this feels like a reasonably balanced effect, right? Like, you know, the, the, there are very real costs to this, especially sort of in the five hander. Like, assuming it, it plays as reads rather than the changes I'd like to make to it. Like, I think it's fairly balanced. Like, that once per game is very, very powerful, but it is going to be hard to crack how to fire that off. Okay. So we got a, a five and a four for representation. I think uh, well, no, I think no, we'll go there pretty it. confidently then, mostly because it says the word Dobby four <laughs> times on the card. <laughs> and that seems like the... Seems like an appropriate amount of Dobbies for uh, that Dobby guy. And um, how fun would you say this would be to play, uh, Sam? Oh, say that one more time. How fun would you say this this character would be to play at locals? 
Mm. And it's a scale of one to five, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I would have to put this one on a 3.5 because it's very unique. You're going to build the deck in a very unique way. And I always think that those are like the cooler parts, especially if you're talking like locals level, right? Like what matters to me is having something that's like interesting and, and unique and plays the game a little bit differently. Um, but because of this reliance on the Dobby character cards, I think that your deck is still going to be like singularly focused on uh, uh, dumping them into the discard pile, but also trying to get them in its hand, right? Like it's it's going to be trying to move those character cards around to the point where your whole deck is probably going to be based on moving cards into position rather than having its own strategy, if that makes sense. Yeah, you're trying to set up for a turn when you can go like, you know, yeah, like enhance um, remove three. Okay, I've now hit my ten. I'll then form after that first attack. Everything's now committed, and then I'll kill you with the rest or some of those lines. Yeah, exactly. It's um, reminiscent to me of of the what was it? There was um, the the combo decks from like set three why can i not think of this character's name uh, i get so many of my hero characters like confused with each other but uh there was if you remember like the coded x when they first came out oh, where there was yeah. like a, a specific amount of ally cards but they all were so good together like command pigeon flock and and uh friend of animals just like enabled so many like sick chaos ally things but you were like so hard pressed to find those ally cards that that was your whole deck was like let me go tutor allies let me wild wild pussy cats to find more ally cards and dump more into my discard pile so i i give it a 3.5 because i think it's it's in the same place that coda was where, where we're trying to we're waiting for more support right we need those more dobby cards exactly more dobby yeah we, we're we're supposed to get a my hero challenger which We've heard absolutely nothing about from the like from the list of challenger decks, so you know we are still hope for more Debbie. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think yeah, I think a three point five there is fair for that one. More like. than fair. Uh, next, we have a very interestingly named one, uh, Richard Plummer the Hater. This <laughs> is a twenty-five health for six-hander, Chaos Earth Order Air. With okay. Response once per turn after you make a control check, that check gets plus X. X equals the number of resource simple resource symbols that the check card shares with your character. Uh, enhance commit and flip one for uh, enhance. Oh. Yeah, there should be a card on there, right? I'm gonna say enhance is the card. Enhance then commit and flip one foundation. This attack gets plus X or uh, plus or uh, minus X speed or uh, damage. X equals the highest control uh, in, in your discard minus the lowest control in your discard. Uh, enhance. Okay. If this attack deals damage, uh, deals X damage, draw one card. X equals this attack's control. That's... Oh! That's a, that's a bit of a mental load, that card. It is. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly, this is based around one checks, right? Yeah. And people knowing my love of a one check. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, if, if we take it on that basis, right? So, like, you know, once per turn, after I make a check, um, you know, my control is going to be, you know, it's a plus one, but then I can actually, it, it mitigates that, that one. Um, you know, in theory, that that enhance commit and flip something to get like, uh, hope. Let's say a five, and hopefully have a one in there. So it's for commit and flip for minus four or plus four speed, which is a lot. If I get the one, I get the. You know, I'm I mean, going to have a five in there. If you play some uh, Rinku foundations, if you check a Rinku foundation, then respond. You just get like an eight check. Yeah, that is a once per turn, right? So yeah. it, again, the idea there, I think, is is to mitigate the one, and then if it deals X damage, draw one card, X equals the tax control. So, like you know, my one check has to deal exactly one damage to draw a card. 
is it supposed to be X or more? Maybe I don't know, but like so it we says X or more. Yeah, yeah, the way the game rules work. If you hmm. deal one, uh, if you deal seven, you've still dealt one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's how that works. Yeah, everything is like a threshold, right? It's like if your hmm. opponent has has three cards in hand, they also have one card in hand. Yeah. It only matters when okay. it comes to cost. So if like the cost was deal one damage, you have to like. Yeah. You deal exactly. So, like, your latent skills is discard two cards. You can't do it if you only have only one because you can't pay cost. Yeah, this is one of those cases where, like, just putting at least in front of X, you know, one word does make it more clear. Yeah. But game yeah. rules wise, dealing one damage is the same as, you know, dealing three damage is also dealing one. This does also trigger on your, impo on your opponents as well. It's very spike. Uh, yeah, like, this yeah, if this attack deals damage, draw one card, X equals uh, its control. So, if your opponent's going to a five damage and you half block it, you take three and draw a card. Mm, that's pretty cool, yeah. Okay, I mean, I, I like it in terms of sort of representing me. I think this is obviously based a lot around one checks. Uh, which is very me. So I think I'd give it a four for that basis. Um, good. And then in terms of balance, this feels like, especially that mid, that middle one, right? Feels very powerful. If you're committing and flipping for plus or minus four speed or damage, that feels kind of bonkers. Well, we're living in a world where Mothra exists, right? Mm. Mothra has a built-in way to get plus five or minus five speed, you know, give or take on, like, everything, if they have enough momentum. So I, I really like the... I like where the middle abilities add a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I think mid-cost is, is fair. The flip of foundation is, you know, kind of whatever. It, it's... I guess it's an Earth card, I mean, right? So we can we can generate a face down. Yeah. The... Um, but it does seem very fair to essentially be able to get like plus two or minus two speed at your basement, most likely. You know, your average fives and threes would yeah. be the difference. But if you want to place, you know, you're encouraged to play six checks now along with your one checks, which you're probably going to do anyways to compensate, right? Mm -hmm. Um. But I love it where it's like the composition of your deck is going to change how this ability plays out. It's going to change the consistency. You know, other players are going to be fine with it just being like, okay, well, my, my highest check is a five and my lowest check is a two, but plus two speed is fine, right? You yeah. know, or plus three speed is fine. And it's and damage as well, so it's, it's all damage. So sometimes... All damage, yeah, that's true. I, You know, whenever I see speed or damage, I just assume you're going to use it for speed like 90% mm -hmm. of the yeah. time. Yeah. But like committing and flipping for minus three damage is probably fine, right? That's um, true. Well, no, no, if you just look at it from like the damage aspect, it's younger to go or late game with a flip effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that just makes that ability even stronger, right? The versatility behind it. Put five damage on a one check sounds pretty good. Yeah. Um, the top part, the check bonus. One of the more obvious and like taboo ways to to design for one checks. That's where my biggest fear is. Like we we didn't really talk balance on the last one because I came in I came in late. Mm -hmm. But that top ability is probably the one that makes me feel like the six twenty five is justified. I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever seen a character with like less than twenty seven health as a six hander that felt like it really does. Momo is twenty six, right? I think Momo one is the only other one, but she. Yeah. Has life gain in her kit. That's not hard to to access. But for characters that don't gain life at all, don't have it in their kit, six twenty five never feels justified. But I think this character is is actually there. I think the six twenty five feels appropriate with the damage reduction ability. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I've got a fairly good idea who this is from. Um, if I were to guess, but. The, Overall, yeah. I like it. Like balance-wise, I think this this does feel fairly balanced. 
Um, like, I, I'd go with a at least a four, I think, from a balance perspective. Yeah, I think for a character that doesn't have a whole kit of cards that are going to share three symbols with it, mm -hmm. um, you're probably, <laughs> like, good to go. But if this was a character that had nine cards that shared three symbols with it, because that top ability, you know, you can make a five check into an eight check. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you can you can make the um, you can make a six. You check make any into check a nine good. Check. So not only are you compensating for a bad check, but you also have you know once per turn one of the best steroid checks possible. So yeah, the the power level here is really strong. But considering if you never play a one check, if you never play a two check, your stats are kind of capped at plus or minus three once per turn. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I think the, the if this attack deals X damage, it might even be like the best ability on here, as mm. good as the other like once per turn abilities are. Yeah. Um, oh, you get chaos. You actually you can play um, Rando Spirit Gun and get the response twice per turn. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's, that's really good. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say a four from a balance perspective would be for me. Um, maybe a three point five. It might be a little over touch, but like I think a four because in order to make the most out of this, you need to you want to be playing those bad checks, right? And the yeah. bad checks kind of balance your deck in that way. Um, in terms of like me wanting to play this, I go with a five. I play the shit out of this character. I think as far as balance goes, I think four feels pretty good. I, I think the main thing, like you said, is is it's not doing... It's really cool because it doesn't require you to have a specifically one check. I think it's still pretty good if you have a bunch of twos. And it's just not super impressive if you only play three checks, but it can still function, right? It's not like a character where... You know, if I'm not drawing or checking my one checks, it's not functioning. There have been some characters like that in the past. Mm. Um, someone mentioned Iceman earlier. If you guys have ever seen Iceman, uh, one of his abilities is if he checks a two or less, he gets to draw a card. Okay. And so you're kind of, you have like this really weird variance on when your character is actually going to activate. And if you check a two and your turn ends, you don't get to use that card immediately. So like... There's a lot of stuff that has like a feels bad area for designs like that. But I think this one like lands perfectly, you know, in that um, my character still functions and still works as long as I've got attacks and foundations in my discard pile. Um, you know, again, like the check bonus is like going second, you know, you can, mm -hmm. you can pass the check to build like really greedily. Like this character gets to do different things than other characters it's not just how well do i buff attacks yeah uh, lady nagan has air right and she has a lot of interaction with two and below checks yeah yeah like this character probably works quite well with nagan's yeah. kit right for sure yeah lady nagan likes to have bad checks and then also has the card right now that kind of helps you play bad checks you can get a plus four to a bad check here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even if you don't play you know, the you one play... checks, that you can compensate with Lady Nagan's kit, and you can just make that response very powerful. Yeah, yeah. I think what's also interesting that I just noticed: uh, this character actually has four symbols. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's actually tweaking the balance on me a little bit. <laughs> that's just <laughs> yeah. like a little bit. This character gets way better with one extra symbol. So the math I've been doing on plus, you know, checking an eight is actually a nine. If you have yeah. a six check that has three symbols, you know, that's a nine. If it's got, if they ever make a four, like, like a card with four symbols that, that checks that well. Because I think the Mount Lady SR is four, right? Yeah, or Genkai's Guidance has four, right? Yeah. yeah. There's a there's a fair, there's a, like a few cards that got, well, foundations and actions to yeah, four well, I suspect the four symbols was just to, so this deck could play as many one checks as possible perhaps um, I'm not sure but um... I was yeah. going to see 
Uh, I was going to see if there's any card that matches all four out there, but I don't think there is. The, a fun thing about this character is that it has a check value of three. I didn't, I didn't add them because I expect them all to just be 6-6, six, six, but nope, this one has a check value of three. It's just check value of three on the character? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, because if you check it, it's still a seven with the response. Mm. That's kind of fun. I, <laughs> I dig this design a lot. Yeah, it being a check value three, so you, if you even if you play the body blocks, you don't get to check a ten. Yeah, that's that's actually a really crazy good inclusion. I think to this because that was going to be my next thought. Was, yeah, my next thought was going to be I can put three ten checks in my deck. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I I think the reason is because like it, in terms of some of like the balance choices here. Is it's because it's? I think if if I'm, my guess is correct, it was submitted by one of our best judges. So uh... I just realised it has got chaos as well. So if you hit with say like a storm of blades, and then you award the victor into the top of your deck, you get plus two to the check, and then you can also give that next check plus three. So you can sit there with a minimum of plus five to your next check. No, yeah. that, that's not how that works, right? Because you respond with the War of the Victor, respond with Storm of Blades. Yeah, so you play the next one for Actually, free. No, you can't anymore because you've aborted it. No, you never award a Victor Storm of Blades. No, because it's after it deals damage. Uh... Storm of Blades is after it resolves, right? Yeah, so, yeah. You, so you, if you, I guess if you went Storm of Blades... But if you've aborted it, it's no longer there to trigger the response. Yeah, right? but if you respond Storm of Blades first, then you respond... Uh, I want the victim to put it on top of your deck because you've you changed the summer blades. That. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. You can't do oh, that. Do you have to immediately play the card. It's there not isn't, there isn't a stat oh. threat. This isn't magic. Award, isn't the victor, award the victor during the damage step. Mm. Storm of blades is way after the damage step. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's why Genkai doesn't work with award the victor like automatically. Oh, okay, that, that's fair. But, uh, yeah. Either, either way, if you deal if you deal damage with one of your attacks, put it on top of your deck. That's plus two to your attack. You check the attack, uh, and then you get to put plus two, plus three onto that as well. So it's plus five. <clears throat> I think for I think for fun, I can give this a four point five, and mm -hmm. for balance, I can give it a four. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for me, like I, I was looking at at least a five, well, at least a four point five, possibly a five, in terms of like how much I want to play this. Like it just incentivized me to play the cards I like playing with anyway. So, um, yeah. So we're doing four, four, four point five. That sounds um, right. Yeah. Okay, so the next three are kind of like a package deal, and they all have a cost of four. So we've got okay. Brett the streamer, which is a 27 helper with as a six hander. With you can attach Richard character cards to your stage. Uh, response: When you add a character to your stage, gain one vitality. Enhance this attack gets plus one or minus one damage. This is. A I mean, it's clearly an old card. They use the word vitality. <laughs> that does that does kind of give away uh, the age of the player that's put, that put this mm -hmm. in there. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I've seen Vitality. I mean, okay, this is obviously fairly fairly simple. Yeah, um, this yeah, this is part of like a triple sort of like mm -hmm. deal. I don't think these are specifically designed with us in mind as players. I think this is more just designed as a. Uh, Kind of UK versus package. Okay, we'll, we'll judge it as a package. Uh, yeah. So then the one after that is, uh, Richard, the voice of reason. You can attach mm -hmm. Brett character cards to your stage. Uh, response: After you add a character card to your stage, unflip or flip one. You may unflip one foundation or flip one rival foundation. Uh, enhance. <laughs> I know what this is now. <laughs> Enhance. Once Sorry, per turn, your rival's that. check get minus one. Failing that the check does not end the turn. Uh, yeah, I imagine the, these are based on what other ones. And then the last one is UK versus the ph Phenomenon. And this is a lot of text. I'm yeah. telling you guys read that. 
So these are just reprints of old cards, are they? I think, um... So... Yeah, so they're inspired by... Inspired by... Um, they're inspired by the Angels, if you've ever seen the Angels characters. I've not, but yeah, no. Apple in chat said uh, this is just Angels retrained. Alara and Cyreth and Omniel. Omniel? Um, yeah, it's Omni I almost said Omnath, but that's magic. Um, so, and this one has a first form to do it. So the Angels were really cool because they were different named characters that you could stack on top of each other. Um, so you could have four of each. And, you know, they just had text that said you can stack, you know, Alara to Cyreth, et cetera, et cetera. And they did something when you stacked one, which made them, like, really slow and clunky. But the things they did when you stacked one were really strong um, to make up for the fact that you could basically only do it during the end phase, like, 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. But then you get the third one with an, an action card. It was, like, very Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, Animate Fusion was what it's called. And you would search all your game zones for an Omniel, and you'd put it into play, and it becomes your starting character, like Fat Gum, and it destroys all the other angels, but he stacks them every enhanced step now from the discard pile, and every time you stack one, you get their effect plus his effect, which is, you know... It was ban worthy. They had to ban it at a certain point, and like, I think they had to errat it and bring it back. So I've just um, I'm just reading Alara and response after you add a character to your staging area, you may gain two vitality, or your opponent loses two vitality. And that doesn't say you can't kill yeah. them. That just says yeah, yeah, you can kill them with that ability. Yes, yeah, and and <laughs> but again, you would only add a character to your staging area like during the end phase after you played it as a four difficulty card or if you're stacked with omniel hmm. yeah but once you get like you know the main one in play right you just can get four of these and then you stack another one it like burns them for eight type thing or whatever exactly and then you know, um, this has once per turn, search your discard and or deck for a character and add it, and then enhance, discard a card, add a character. So once you've got the UK versus the Phenomenon going, you know, you're getting all those abilities on the other two, pretty much every enhanced step. Yeah. So, yeah, it feels like once you get the Phenomenon in play, it's going. the game is going to end very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where to put this on a balance perspective because it does seem like a strictly nerfed Angels, which that has been kind of the the theme is mm -hmm. when they, they do like a spiritual reprint of a card, they just make it weaker. And I've actually had a lot of lengthy discussions with old heads about like why that's probably not the most interesting design. You know, granted, for people who've never experienced it, they won't care, right? Like they won't know. Yeah, exactly. Like, they won't know what it was like to be, like, full-powered. Um, but at the same time, if it's not strong enough, right, if it's not something that everyone's playing anyways, then, like, new people won't pick it up. So, it, it's just very interesting. There's a lot of cards every set that are, like, almost the exact same card, just with lower numbers or a higher difficulty or a worse control check. Or if it's that new Bakugo card, it's like all three of those things mm -hmm. where they literally nerfed every number on the card in one direction or another. Um, so this one is tough for me because I love the idea, like as as like the 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 joke of it, I think it's great. Um, if you played during like Angel's era at all, they were like a unique very different deck played the game very differently and got to do like got to feel very weak at the beginning and then build into something really cool um so i think like balance wise this is probably still like in the three to four area but as far as is this something i would take to a locals i don't think i would take it to a locals more than once or twice because it does feel like it's it's for the meme you know yeah. Also, I guess this doesn't necessarily work with current rules, right? Because current rules, when you stack, you don't get the abilities to all the other characters. Oh, yeah, they did just, like, change something about that to make Fat Gum work, didn't they? Well, it, it, that was... I think that was just a weird... 
rules loop. That, that was, that, uh, it, you, you know, could sort loop. of most people played it as intended, but actually, if it was work, yeah. if it worked the way it did, then actually there was a load of other rubbish yeah. to do with it. But in general, like you don't get extra abilities by stacking characters, right? Which I'm, but I'm assuming. Oh. Um, on these, it's like when you have multiple Brex in play, you get to play the enhance on all of your Brex, but that isn't the case in the current game. Uh, I think, yeah, go on, Samuel, the, way that this, the way that the character stacking used to work was as long as they were different, they had to be like a different copy of the character, so you couldn't stack four of the same character and get four times right. the same okay. ability. Um, but that is a very good point. The way the rules work now, I, I do think this character just doesn't actually function. But mm. with the assumption that it works the way it says, you know, on the card, right? Yeah. I think we have to judge it based on that. But even even with that, it is still kind of in a, a sort of clunky area without its own support. I think this so would make... In terms of representing us, I'd go with a two, not a one. But because it, it's like I like the idea of it, it being this kind of using that angel's idea of like this co collective thing. Um, so yeah, so it, that's why it gets the two for me rather than the one. Yeah, yeah it doesn't seem strictly inspired by you guys, which is probably hmm. the weakest bit I, uh, of the of the the three character package here. For me, I think this would make a very cool kind of like PvE kind of deck, like uh, going back to Pharos, the original of Pharos with uh, MTG, where they had like the Hydra deck and the Minotaur deck having like a universe deck, having an entire PvE deck designed around this kind of play would be very, very cool. Hmm. But like I said, with the current rules, it doesn't quite work as it is. So PVE would be a great way to answer that, and having a deck that kind of like it doesn't you know, it doesn't involve printing out cards that would be very powerful, but allowing the, like this kind of deck to just exist would be because it's a very cool concept. I just think, uh, like I said, it's not really der derived from us. It's more just. A great way to kind of reprint an older sort of design. Yeah. So I think, you know, a two for representing us, like balance wise, I can't say it's a four. Like, it probably is reasonably balanced, like, because this takes a long while to set up and the current game doesn't necessarily let you do that sort of thing. Um, and without there being a lot of support for it, it probably doesn't necessarily pull it off or off. And so I think from a balance perspective, it probably is just like it's a four, it's a fine thing. And as Sam said, it. Play, like taking it to local wise, it's probably a two. You'd play it a couple of times, but you, you, it isn't something you consistently take to locals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a two for you know, is sort of where I'd, I'd guess I'd land on it. Yeah, I'd give it a three on the balance, if only because I think it's a little underpowered. And like I was talking about earlier, yeah. as someone who, yeah. as someone who got to enjoy angels and like their nerf errated, but still very enjoyable and unique form um you know it just it doesn't like the difference between one health gaining or losing one health i don't think was too too big of a deal maybe with the current design philosophy where burn effects aren't supposed to kill you you know you you could maybe say it's pushing the line that would be you know their full powered numbers but I, i'll give it a three just because it's a little underpowered yeah yeah i can buy that so we move on to. Uh, oh, I've accidentally put the name on. I've accidentally put the score on a different one. Uh, uh, they should bring back Ballistic Snapkick. <laughs> Y'all are cowards. So the next one, ha I assume this is a typo in the name. It is a 29 helper with six hand. It's Richard Stormlord. Uh, pro hero streamer uh, response once per turn destroy one foundation after you make a uh, check or at a one or less pass that check enhance your rival loses x health x equals the number of times you've played this enhance this combat phase only be playable if this attack has printed damage three or less okay 
So obviously very much based around Stormer Blades, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, slightly disappointing. It doesn't have the three Storm of Blade symbols. Like that seems a big whiff. It should have a Chaos Void. I don't know what's going on there. Um, that's that's a, a mark from me. A, a knock on it. Is there many death cards that have a free damage? I don't know, but like this is obviously based on Storm of Blades, right? Because it's printing damage of three and it's a one check. So it should have Air Chaos Void, which are the three symbols of Storm of Blades. That would make perfect sense. Well, maybe they just thought that flavor wise, the burn had to be a death effect and Void was just the third symbol. It's just the one that they got rid of. I'll tell you yeah, what, though. True. I'll tell you what, though, Richard. Uh, mm -hmm. Death has got shape shifting impalement and tray sides that have free damage. Yeah, yeah. So that that seems kind of nuts with that bottom enhance. Mm -hmm. The real yeah, question, Squire in chat is saying that uh, that response can get around breaker. Yep. Yeah. I guess that's why it says one or less because mm. if it goes into the, it goes below zero. I mean, I want to know. Can these symbols put a one check on top of the deck for the explicit purpose of that response? Uh, you know, I love the idea that I'm in a position where I need to block like a super fast attack, you know, and I fail if I check a four or a three, you know, if I fail if I check a five, but if I check a one, all of a sudden I pass. That's yeah, super yeah. funny to me. I'm sure there's stuff that stack things, right? Um, Chaos has a word the victor, but that seems. But you're not checking a one or less because you're getting plus two to it, right? Well, so by rule, whenever a card references a check value, it's always the the initial printed value. Okay. Uh, you've got unbreakable chair. You... Flip after you mill one or more cards. Add them to the top of your deck. Uh, award the victor, and you've got the new camouflage counter. Uh, card pull response after another attack deals damage. Add this card to the top of your deck. Your next check is plus one, which so that's not going to really do anything there because that's a free check in itself. Yeah, I actually messed myself up for a long time because we talked about Iceman earlier. Mm. The first deck I ever took to a singles event for a world championship was an Iceman deck, and there was a card in the format on symbol. That just gave plus one to all my checks for the turn to play attacks. I didn't run it because I thought it would cause me to check a three and I couldn't draw. And I played against another Iceman who had that card in their deck and they had to like explain the rule to me. So my deck was like just definitively worse because I didn't know the rule. <laughs> no idea, I guess. But it is not intuitive. It, it doesn't say if it said printed check, it would be more intuitive. Mm. Yeah, there's there's nothing really that can do it. The only one that we would be able to do it as a, is Elvish Tutoring, but that's a Vox Machina Enhance, and that's the flip commit, search your attack uh, deck for one attack, reveal it, then put it on top of your deck. But mm. that's Vox mm. Machina only, unfortunately, but that would have been perfect. Yeah, I uh, I love that this <laughs> I love that this character has the the character traits. Pro hero and streamer that was getting bonus points for me for sure. Yes, uh, obviously, not you know, docking some points for spelling my name wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah, Captain Rick Hard. <laughs> that was pretty... In terms of the, also, the design... I'd like to point out that at some point, Brett could have definitely fixed that and chose not to. Mm -hmm. That would involve me looking at the cards in detail beforehand, which would have been unfair for neutrality. <laughs> Although um, I did, I, I I did go through the names to look for ones that weren't named us, so I probably could have fixed it. But you know, content. Yeah. Um, I like the design. I, I dislike the fact that they've replaced Void with Death because I love Void. So. Um... That's that's a knock from that perspective. I, I you know it's obviously very much based around Zorma Blades. That's great. I love the card. Possibly my favorite card. So um, I think just in terms of 
Representing me and stuff. It's a four. Like I say, it gets a knock for misspelling my name and it gets a knock for not having the void symbol. It might put death in there from your uh, Wolfwood days. I didn't really play Wolfwood on death. I played it on fire. So I was expecting Air Chaos Fire for some reason. So Yeah, I mean, I love the fire symbol. If it had been fire, I, I might have been a bit more lenient. But um, You should have played yeah. a lot of fire. Yeah, I think I think for me, I can give this like super high marks on on fun. Like if I would play this, I would absolutely play this at a local for mm. sure. It's doing two like less interactive things, you know, things that my opponent can't really like stop me from doing, and that's a huge a huge part of me picking a character personally, especially when I want to play for fun. Yeah. is how much can people like stop me from accomplishing my goal you know if there's a character that you know my opponent can just accidentally ruin my combo or mess up my setups you know if i'm a character who like has to have a card in my card pool you know and forcing surrender is like super popular right now mm. like i'm probably just not gonna i don't want to bother with it if it's gonna accidentally get countered and this one feels like pretty safe as far as like you know, characters that can mess with your, you know, like like you basically have to make someone recheck, and I mm -hmm. think there's so many rechecks in the game right now. Um, in fact, there's only one right that can make your opponent recheck. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My only thing from a balance perspective is I wonder if that bottom mid heart is actually far too good. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. Is with Echo. And... It doesn't say it can't kill them. Yeah. And if you play, th as long as you're playing three damage tribal, which is what this character obviously wants to do, all you need to do is play three attacks and they've lost six health. They can't do anything about. Uh, it says three oh, or less. Five. So you can play things like Cage of Hell, Measured mm. Violence, uh, basically anything that's the two printed uh, attacks as well in Chaos. And just yeah. Like, yeah, I'm gonna play all these cheap attacks. I'm gonna play these three free difficulty attacks that even even if you block them all, you're still gonna walk away with six damage. But if your opponent takes them all, you've only <laughs> dealt fifteen damage. And if your opponent takes three unblocked normal attacks from any other character, they're fucking dead. So yeah. in that respect. That's fair. I think in that respect, I, I can agree with the current design philosophy of it. They probably, you know, if, if Universe's games printed this, it almost certainly wouldn't be able to kill you with the burn. Um, yeah, I mean, but I, I would give it a chance it might cap at three or something. I don't know. Dabby can kill with the burn. Dabby if three. Universe's games. If, well, you, but Dabby's is like strictly like bonus damage after you deal damage. Yeah. Hmm. Like you're already dealing damage. So like the cusp of if a if a burn effect can kill you in, in current design is if you're already dealing damage, it kills. Yeah. It's not the Jasko days of where like uh well like, you know, S Festival can kill, right? Uh S class hunter could kill off being off a stun effect. Um S class hunter was I, I thought it was after your opponent plays an ability on a on a committed. Oh, committed yeah, so, yeah. So if they play on a tenacious foundation, yeah. But yeah, I think that can. I played the absolute shit out of that card for a whole summer. That card was super meta for you know a couple months at least for like a, a major uh, world championship, and that effect like never got used. Uh, I played it in on the Sunday of the HLC in like the retro thing. And it came up twice because someone completely forgot what the hell the card actually did. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll put, yeah. I'll ready this up uh, for me to be able to burn two. And they're like, what? I was like, yeah. Like, oh, okay. That's actually pretty de decent. Yeah, and it's repeatable. It's crazy. It's, uh, I mean, you got League of Villains that have had the same effect. I don't think it's ever actually fired. Uh, yeah, I've seen it like once or twice. And it's usually on cards. What's messed up? Is whenever I see that ability on League of Villains happen, it's almost always like a card that is responding to a stun effect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a card that's like, here's my stun hate, and you just get burned for one for activating it. So, um, 
I don't know. I would put this up as like a five on if I take it to a locals. Um, I do, you know, you could maybe like tweak the bottom ability to be a little more balanced. So I can put it as like a four just because it, it should probably be if it deals damage, they lose this much health. But, you know, I think for me personally, design wise, I have two caveats when it comes to like rival loses health, like burn mm -hmm. effects. One, if you're too afraid to let it kill people, it's probably not balanced in the first place, which yeah. is why we saw the one kill people are like after you've successfully dealt damage. And then two, if you're going to do a burn effect, it should have nothing to do with dealing damage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because at that uh, point, it's just bonus damage. After seeing how Vinci has played Star Wars Blades in the uh, past, though, I mean, you could easily get that this bottom enhanced up to like five or six damage the way that you play Star Wars Blades. Yeah, yeah, and a bit like this. This might have been better, say, as a response on damage, right? That you that gets to tick up the more times you hit with the three damage, the more times so your oval can sort of interact with it, i.e., by just blocking you. Um, so they can't just sit there and beat your three damages. But like, yeah, I mean, it could have been something like uh, enhance your rival loses X health. X is one plus the amount of attacks that have been blocked this turn. Well, so if this just said your attack with a damage of three or less gets plus three damage, would it be better or worse than this burn effect? Because uh... if you just start out by going here six, 12, 18, mm. and you would like a three attack example, a flat plus three damage to all those is strictly better in a world where they're not blocking, and strictly yeah. worse in a world where they are. Yeah. So I I think the burn effect is just kind of fine. This is a character that has no draw power. Its response that is once per turn requires you to play difficult cards in your deck, right? So it has like, you know, it has a, a deck building cost to it, but it has a great reward. It has a great way to compensate for it. Um, and then I think the burn fits the idea of these symbols. Yeah. The burn mm -hmm. like. You know, burn comes from the death symbol. It would fit. I think this would fit like chaos death void better. Mm, maybe. Um, you know, like void is kind of also a burn symbol because void is like the I don't play fair symbol. Void yeah. is like the prevent people from having fun. It's the fun sucker symbol, and it's the uninteractive symbol. You know, prevents people from interacting with it and prevents you from interacting the way you want. So it's always been like a secondary burn symbol because of that. And so I think that like just making your rival lose one or two health on your first two attacks is absolutely fine. It only really starts to feel oppressive when you have like that long storm of blades chain. But considering that there's no damage pump on this character, like I think that it's fine to let the three damage tribal kind of breathe. The yeah. and it, it's much less likely for Storm to Yahtzee now with a 60 card deck like it could do when it was at 50. Yeah, like I, I just I don't see this character ever getting more than like you know 10 or 11 damage off of the burn, anyways. Mm -hmm. I would say if we wanted to improve the balance, um, a, a big way to do that would be knocking that health down. You know, mm. 629 is like a respectable stat long. I would expect a character that burns this much to have 625. Because in yeah. the past, you know, that was always... That, like, like the I think it's what, Ochako 3? It was like a 625 because she just has like a crazy amount of filter. And she has like check bonuses, but she never lives long enough to like do it. So, like, if this character is really good at just racing you because it has, like, automatic guaranteed damage every time it plays an attack, maybe knocking the health down would make it feel more competitive in those races. Yeah. Like, like you know, in that example where you burn six, right, because you, you, uh, <laughs> you, you, you played three attacks and didn't have to do anything, hmm. if you were at 624... You know, it would be like your opponent had already dealt six to you to start the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's so. Fair. I can I can yeah. definitely see balance wise, representation wise. I think it's a little weak. I think it does kind of hammer in on LOL Storm of Blades a little hard, but 
you know, when it comes to community projects, people are going to latch on to only a one or, you know, they're going to latch on to Dobby, right? It's the same thing as the Dobby thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, like, yeah, representation. So it's like a, yeah, probably a 3.5 to 4 for me. Uh, in terms of balance, probably the similar 3.5 to 4. And then the amount I want to play this, I'd say a 4. Um, that sort I, of I would go 3, 4, 4.5. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can buy that. So the the playability was, that was the last one I missed. Uh, so yeah, 3, 4, 4.5. I just want, I like the guaranteed payoff to doing a big Storm of Blades stream because yeah. I've, I've tried Storm of Blades out a lot. I do dig effects like that. Um, You know, I've, I've tried, um, was it Heroic Clash, the one check for seven? I've tried that card a lot, and I like the idea of these cards a lot, but the one check has never felt worth it. And this is one of the few characters that makes me go, man, I would really find it worthwhile to play a Storm of Blades deck now. Yeah, and that, that's the kind of thing you want to walk away from, with, isn't it? With the, I want to play this, car, this card now because it's got that kind of thing, but and take it to locals and just have that kind of interaction or check out this cool combination that you can now play. Yeah. What you know, if there ever is a game where you win completely via burn and never deal real damage, that I mean, is definitely going to be a problem. Yeah, I will say that it will be very lame once your opponent gets you to you know a sub 10 life total, and now technically everything is lethal because you drew three attacks, you know. Mm -hmm. So I can actually, I'll knock it down to a 3.5 on the balance. The more I think about it, the more of just, I can press a button that says you lose health is just never really okay. Especially when it's scaling health with a, based on the card that lets you play your next attack for free. Yeah, the Togo, I was trying to compare it to Togo 1 in my head, because Togo 1 technically has chip damage, right? Yeah. Every attack Togo 1 plays, you're going to lose at least one health. Um, but I think she has the you can't die to it caveat, so uh, I have to remember that. Yeah, yeah, it can't it can't kill them. So even on that yeah. one, they were like, you know, yeah. this is a guaranteed yeah. one life loss. So, so we don't want to, we don't want that, don't want that this situation where they're stuck on one and then just die with the, like I just die because I can't. If as long as you draw an attack, I die. Yeah, I like the scaling. I like the scaling element to, you know, kind of go with the fact that, like, if you're playing three damage moves, you got to do a big string. But, yeah, the 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 taboo on enhance you lose health, no other real strings, you know, I built my deck this way, is probably still too good, even if it has to be a, a three damage move. Uh, uh... I know I have a lot of fun talking about these kind of ones, but we're approaching 11 o'clock and we are only halfway through, so we'll pick up the pace a little bit. I thought we were close to being done. When you said five out of six, I was like, oh, we're we're in like bonus land. No, no we're, we're on number 24 here. We've, we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10. We've done 11 out of 44. We're a quarter of the way through. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if that math checks out, but I'm here for it. <laughs> 11 out of 44, that's a quarter. Mm -hmm. Oh, 44, they said 24. Oh, oh my god, we have a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's snap this up. Yeah, let's speed this up. <laughs> I didn't realize. I'm sitting here waxing poetic <laughs> yeah, about We've got... Uh, the next one is Brett Dabby Devotee. It's a League of Villains streamer villain card. Uh, first form once per game. I'm, I'm here myself. Uh, why am I hearing myself? That's really weird. That might be me echoing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, first form, once per turn, place one copy of Dabby, any version, from your hand on top of this character. For the rest of this turn, you may use abilities on that uh, version of Dabby. Remove that Dabby at the end of the turn. Response, your turn, lose three health, discard one Dabby card from your hand, 
After you play an attack, choose one ability of the discarded card. This attack gains the ability of uh, of that card for the rest of the turn. Draw one card. This is a thirty-five helpful with seven. Ha uh, that's a seven-hander. Okay. Why thirty-five? I don't. The f the first form once per game. He's cool. He's cool, but it feels a bit off because I mean, you know, uh. All my four got to do every turn. Yeah, and it's only a once per game that you get to yeah. do the dabby thing. So, uh, and then, but you're giving an attack something from a dabby card. You're giving, uh, yeah, basically, dabby you're giving card. an attack a character enhance, which on paper sounds great until you realize that none of them have card pull abilities, which means they only get to be used on this one attack. <laughs> Yeah, it's well. I think it's very much meant to be. You give them the once per game, most likely, mm -hmm. um, or it's just plus three damage to an attack. But because yeah, it's a response to you to get the plus three damage to you next. Because uh, I was looking at like, oh, that'd be really cool to use the uh, Dabby free enhance and just like, uh, but oh, if any of my attacks get to do damage, I said, oh no, yeah, it's like it needs to have card pull on it to trigger the response. That's not gonna work. Yeah. So Dabby this one's all over the place. Yeah, Dabby um, 1 and Dabby 2 are very abusable with, like, just plus 3 to this one or plus 3 to your next. Uh, Dabby 3 is alright, but... Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was expecting a lot of true form All Might energy from these submissions with you using Dabby cards. Yeah. But this one, it's just... It's a little discombobulated. Um, I think I would give this one like threes all around, because the the uh, what's it called the representation you know is obviously there with like you like Dobby right so you get to be you get to do all the Dobby things and if you're a fan of Dobby's abilities on his character cards this is the deck for you. The, you get to play all of them multiple times. The big elephant, yeah. the, the one thing we are overlooking, which Apple has pointed out, is this is a seven hander with 35 health. Yeah, yeah you can ignore the rest it. of the text, right? You could just ignore the text. I'm just going to play a blank 735. I'm good with that. So I don't think this gets a three for balance from me. Yeah. I think these abilities are suspect enough that having a high health pool wouldn't be the end of the world that's where all that's where pretty much all my balance points are being knocked off though it lost two straight points for being a 735 oh i'd, I'd go yeah. down to i think i'd go make this a two for balance for me just because i think 735 is is a little nuts i mean let me get the joke there's got to be a joke right the response is fine, and I mean, you got the maximum you can use it is twelve times, which would be death because it can kill you. But, like, yeah. I get, I get all my true form is a seven thirty, right? But he burns three every single yeah. turn, guaranteed. So, this is just okay. I I lose three health when I discard a card, but you could just not do that ever and don't I mean, play them after you've used the first form well, for also... one. Day, after you the first form yeah. of one Dabby, if you haven't got a Dabby in hand, your character's essentially blank. Uh, the fun thing is, is here is... Oh, no, you still need to... Oh, sorry, I was looking at it, but yeah, you still need to discard a Dabby as cost. You can't just use the response to draw a card. You still have to discard a Dabby as cost. Yeah, this is a 3-2-3 three, three for me, I think. It's a cool concept. Yeah, yeah. I just... Uh, I, don't, I don't think attacks need character abilities in Alistair. I also just realized that the response um, lets you use the Dobby once per game, like four times in a game. Yeah. So the balance is at a one. Super fun idea. I mean, but we how many foundations a, would you have to be running for that? Uh, it's well, we're a seven thirty five, so I believe in our ability to do anything. Well, I mean, yeah. if we were a strict sixty card deck, we're we're not going to be physically able to pull that off. If I'm playing a seven thirty five, I guarantee you, I'm not <laughs> playing a sixty card minimum deck. Yeah, and also, like, even just being able to get to do it a second time is probably enough, right? Oh, it has all, which means I can like keep removing a... uh, polite and well spoken and rebuilding it. <laughs> 
if it was a blank 735, I'd give it a three for balance. <laughs> if it's with with the abilities tacked on, it's it's down to a one. Yes. So but yeah, it is a sweet one. idea. It's it's a novice idea, but it's I I think you agree it's a little bit discombobulated. Yeah. It it just you know, we, we, we saw a cool card. We saw a cool custom card contest and we we submitted a cool custom card and didn't <laughs> it didn't go much beyond that. So uh, we have a cool one for Richard who's a massive monomer hater, but this will also hit on Toga three uh, Toga four. Uh Richard skill tester, a seven hander with nineteen health with response. After a rival uses a non printed ability, they lose two health. And enhanced draw one card, this attack gains enhanced discard one card, draw one card. You just get to draw a card on every attack. So enhanced draw a card, this attack gains E, discard one card, draw one card. But you get so to I draw a card to and then filter out. Card, uh, or I give... So you draw a card and bad. then you can loot <laughs> if you want. So you get to draw a card and then you get to loot and burn the opponent for two on every attack you play. Yeah, and then every attack oh, your opponent plays. I get how that works now, because you give it to your opponent's attack, and it's like, well, do you want to use it? Or I can give it to my own attack. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you get to draw a card, and then if the rival loots, mm. they lose two health. Yeah. They can basically pay two health to loot. Okay. So you get to draw a card regardless, which means you are a seven-hander who is effectively a better version of Asui 3. You get to draw on every attack right. regardless you of also... You also get to draw a card on every attack that you play, yep. and then also get to loot. So, like, balance-wise, the sheer amount of card draw is staggering, yeah. but how many times have I seen a seven-hander do anything with no that. stats involved? True. Um, yeah, and the opponent can just say, okay, draw a card, I won't use this, so you don't get to be badly for two. Or, you know, they right. you again... It's a punisher thing, right? They're always going to pick the thing that's worse for you. Um, right. I don't know how this this fits into me. Um, I think they gave you villains, so they're you, obviously mm -hmm. like you're on the hater train somewhere. Yeah, the, the response is just a your public disdain for Monoma. Because Monoma copies Quite abilities. Possibly. That sounds like that's what it is, actually. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. you guys have a Monoma player locally that's spurned by Richard. Nathan, no, I just, I'm, it's I'm, just a very personal dislike for the character. I don't know what it is. I just always have, um, and I know. I it's that character too. Uh, one of our judges for Nats, because they played in Nats last year, cut the faces of multiple Monomas and stuck it on every other character that was legal at the time. Uh, and Richard, Richard was well, just not impressed. He's just not a fan of Monoma, and it upsets Nathan. Uh, yeah, I think for me, this probably gets a. I'm just trying to think, like a three, probably for for me. I get the the hate, the Monoma hate. Uh, balance wise, I think it's probably like a three, just because it's a little underpowered in terms of I statting, mean, right? Yes, it draws cars out of the wazoo, but it doesn't give any stats. And I then... think we can bump it to four because the enhance has such good synergy with the response. It's very well designed, and it... No, I like the design. I'm just thinking from a power level perspective, and I, I think from a, a... I think a three on that, and then in terms of my, my desire to play this, again, probably a three. I think I'd probably just say this is like a threes across the board. I would love this as a two difficulty foundation where the bottom ability is like a flip or a destroy. Mm -hmm. And you just get to like sideboard this against a specific combo that's adding enhances, right? Like, I don't think we've had too many uh... really obvious examples in the past, but like a snack time. Like, if I could sideboard this against snack time back in, you know, when it was legal, I would mm -hmm. feel fantastic about this card as like a two five tech piece I bring in from my sideboard. As a character, I feel like this really kind of falls flat, and I think the most damning thing is I really wouldn't want to sleeve this character up for a locals. Yeah. It's just yeah. a lot of card draw. 
maybe like a three three two then. Three three two. Yeah, I'm, that's that, that's where I'm at. I'm at like a two three two probably. <laughs> Uh, next one is Brett Dragon Heritage. Uh, enhance once per turn. This attack gets plus X damage, where X is the number of cards in your card pool with dragon in the name. And enhance lose one health. Your next check gets plus one. Uh, your next check to play an attack gets plus one. If it, that card has fire, it gains plus two speed. This is a twenty-seven helper with six. Uh, that's six under Chaos Earth Fire. Uh, does Ry okay. Ryuku has Earth, right? Because that would be pretty much yes. all you could play. E well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't um, know. This would need this would need to be like a clash deck, or like, uh, with uh, oh, this Dragon yeah. Darkness Flame, right? Dra uh, Darkness Dragon Prowess, Dragon Crash, Dragon Dive, Dragon Impact, Dragon Strike are the uh, the only attacks that have Dragon. Yeah, that's true. There is there's the Hiei Dragon stuff. Mm. Um Oh yeah, everything else is like from the first Yuhaga show too. There's some really cool cards with Dragon and Retro, so I'll mm. say that. Yeah. But you're right, you're pretty much locked into the Earth symbol unless you want to play exactly one Hiei or two Hiei attacks. Yeah, you kinda of locked into um, Earth and putting some of your best attacks have zero abilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, you yeah, I, I like where they're going with this. Um, they might have you confused for a different pen dragon, but <laughs> I it, like I like that it's not just a Dobby guy design. No. So I think that's helping it stand out a bit. Yeah, um, I think it's a cool idea. Even if like the carpool doesn't go along with it, I think from a concept perspective, I think it's very cool. Yeah, I think if this was yeah. a clash deck, or if it was part, if it had like a nine card kit, this would be very, very cool to see where this kind of comes. It says uh, number of dragon cards in your card pool, so I could see some foundations or like an action that says doesn't count towards progressive and has dragon in the name, so everything's hmm. getting plus one well, damage. You're getting plus one to all your checks. So if you start off your attack stream with just playing a dragon foundation into a dragon attack, you basically are refunding that foundation for the rest of the turn, you know, the, the one in the card pool, while getting, like, a plus two damage bonus, even if you played no more dragon cards. So mm -hmm. I think in that respect, it's very functional. But that lose out your next check to play an attack card gets plus one seems really, really yeah. good. I, 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 didn't, I didn't focus too much on that, but, yeah, that, uh, the, fi the fire getting plus two... That on its own is really, really strong. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there is a cost, but it's very powerful, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I like dragons. I've liked dragons for ages. I had a fully, like, foiled-out Scion the Earl Dragon commander deck when I played MTG. So, yeah, this definitely gets a four in catching me as a kind of person, because Dabby isn't my entire identity. I also have dragons. Yeah. It's also probably just a play in my like surname. Dragons. I I I took my partner's name because it's Pen Dragon. It's better than my name was. Oh, I didn't know that part. That does. I would too, though, because yeah. Pen Dragon is a sick name. Do you want to be Hampson or do you want to be Pen Dragon? I want to be Pen Dragon. It's a better name. Mm. Uh, ba <laughs> balance wise, I think the 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 card kind of evens itself out with how underpowered the enhances compared to how powerful the bottom enhances. True. Because like you can even the build your per turn. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so it's like you can use the once per turn for dragons, locking yourself into earth, or you can play a fire deck and just give everything plus one check plus two damage. And if you start off with like uh, dragon of the darkness flame or dark dragon prowess, you can like cool. One of my attacks is going to get plus one damage. You got to figure out where that's coming. Yeah, I don't know why it's a once per turn. I don't no. think it needs necessarily to be a once per turn. What sim what symbols does no. uh? What well, well, I can't remember the zero year once per the cl the class the class reunion one that lets you just play your next one skipping progressive. Future is now. Yeah. Yeah. There's none of these symbols. Ah, because imagine you could just play that. And you could play like 
Uh, you can go and fire. If I had fire, you could put I am the dragon, mastering the dragon, uh, dragon law expert, expert. You can just slam all these foundations in and just drop this one attack with throw and go, yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, I think either, yeah, that top enhance either needs to be not once per turn. Yeah. And it just kind of scales the amount of dragons you're playing. Or, like Apple in chat is saying, it's a once per turn, but it's number of dragons in your discard pile. So oh, similar to okay. something like, um, you know, whatever the, the Fury uh, discard and Mentum, whatever. Yeah, the Turbo Blast Rush. Yeah, Turbo Blast yeah, Rush. Blast, just, but yeah, turbo. Okay. I think, yeah, I think a free for balance, just because that bottom enhance is so powerful and the top enhance is not mm. bad, just underpowered. Playability wise, personally, I probably wouldn't play it because that top enhance, I I feel too restrained by it. Mm. I, I, I even though so, the bottom enhance just can carry the deck itself, I feel like that uh, top enhance would need some kind of value. So this is why when I was doing Nick's design contests, and most of the time when I do a character design. I do like a kit with it, at least a mini kit, even if it's not something to be submitted somewhere, because I don't think it's really fair necessarily to judge the the design based on the cards that are available now, if only because in a theoretical future world where a future card comes out, there's going to be other cards around it, right? There'd be a reason to, to print a card that counts yeah. Dragon in its name. So I would have to assume if it ever did come out, it would have support to make it playable on all three symbols, despite us seeing in the past like characters that really don't have other options, right? Like I think it was um who's the Mirage girl? Kami? Kami, yeah. Kami had the like, haunts on like two of her symbols and not on the third one. So you know, it is what it is when it comes to, to something like that. But I, I don't like to judge necessarily based on the current card pool, mm. but it, it's unavoidable that it influences it when you think of, like, you know, Storm of Blades, right? Like, things you can currently do. That yeah. being said, uh, it's true. The bottom enhance is crazy. The top one is, is you know, something that could be, like, scaling up, like, plus one, plus two, plus three instead of once per turn. Um but that being said, I don't think this is doing too much for me. This is a design that works if I want to play all the beautiful dragon cards in my commander deck because they look so pretty. Yeah. You know, this is a design that gives me a payoff for taking a bunch of dragon cards that might not necessarily work together and giving them a reason to ex coexist in my deck. And that kind of stuff is wonderful for Magic the Gathering, Commander, and like other theme decks. But I'm giving this like a three all across the board, I think. I give it a four just because, you know, I love dragons. But yeah, like you're saying, we can only judge it based on the cards that are here. If to yeah. if tomorrow UVS goes, the first set of 2025 is going to be fairy tale. this card just suddenly got a lot better. Yeah, well, and we don't even have... Even our cards with dragon in the name don't even have dragons in the art like at least half the time and Ryukyu barely counts. She doesn't look much like a dragon to me. So yeah, 4-3-3 three, three for this one, I think. Or 4-3-2, whichever you want to bring uh, it. Let's move on to uh, Dicky Big Plums. Uh, uh, immediately a zero for the first one. <laughs> this is a 30 health with 6 hand size. Response once per turn. Uh, after your check after you check if you are what? Uh, 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 after after you check if your checked card is less uh, less than four, add that card to your hand and recheck. Permanently reduce your maximum hand size, maximum health by four. Uh, Jeez. Response after you play an attack, it gets plus one speed and plus one damage for each one check in your discard pile. Uh, Enhance once per turn. Look at the top two cards of both players' deck. You may place them back in any order. So that's just Jiro. I bought one. Yeah, are you a Jiro player? Uh, I do, I do. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You, you played Jiro Storm Blades at Nats? No, no, no. Oh, that makes sense. One of the okay, okay, you get a pass. You get a pass. Oh, regional. It was regionals. Yeah, Jiro Storm Blades at regionals. Again, sorry, you, you get a pass. <laughs> 
It's got. I like this a lot, honestly, uh, except the name. I agree with the name. Uh, this is a yeah. Death Chaos Air. What, what's all? You got a lot of death. I, I don't know why the death. I've, I've never really played the death symbol. I don't know why it's not the void symbol. Everyone should know I love the void symbol. I uh, you, yeah, now. if they give you the void symbol, you get gin cards. Also, and I'm very certain this is Buddy Harry. It's either Harry or Gary. Um, because they're the only ones that would call me Dickie Big Thumbs. Um, uh, obviously, again, base round one checks, fair. Um, yeah, the the response is probably pretty good. Um, uh, I mean, I think I the, think, sec um, the second response is kind of nuts. Yeah, this is. Yeah. I think this is high power. But I also think that it is, um, it has like a design intentionality because Jiro was always really good at playing two checks and one checks because of that scout mm -hmm. ahead kind of ability. Um, I do think the numbers probably need some tweaking, uh, starting with 30 health, even because you plan to reduce your maximum by four. Um, is probably still a little too much, especially since once you take four damage, that response becomes free. Uh, yeah, this could easily get twenty six, and then the other thing could be permanently reduce it by two. Yeah, something like that. Like starting at thirty means you're probably not gonna have to do that response before you take damage, most likely. And even if you do, again, like going to a six point six just. Seems fair for a character that's going to get the kind of stats here. Uh, um, I'd probably yeah, say you the, want... the, um, the the speed and damage response is super dangerous just because the more one checks that they print, you know, the the worse it'll like the stronger it'll get. But I think for that middle response, I'd really like to see it more like the the first design that I looked at when I jumped on, where it's like based on control values. Okay. rather than specifically one checks because i really liked how the other designs were like a scale of how bad do you want your checks to be and like the risk reward rather than just saying specifically one checks but yeah. other than that i think balance wise i have to go like a 3.5 but i would 100 percent play this at a local yes i think uh, so the, again uh... in terms of Representing so, me, I like the fact it mixed Storm of Blades and Jiro. Like that middle response is very Jiro esque, right? Um, in that it's obviously response speed, so you get to play it with flashes. Um, for in terms of me, again, it gets a it gets Doctor Point because of the name, and uh, you know, my regret nothing, so yeah. Um, <laughs> for uh, power wise, yeah, I think it might be a bit over tweaked. So again, it's probably about a three point five. It does a whether I play this, it's a five. Like it's it's great. Yeah, it, there's a lot of easy like the like there's a lot of dials and knobs that you can twist yeah. for balance. And this one you could easily put like you know a once per turn on the damage pump. You could put it speed or damage. You could say it's only when you play a one check attack you get the speed and damage. Like there's a lot of twists and turns to make this like more palatable. But it is as it stands like a deck where you realistically will probably never check a one. Like yeah. you're just not because the re the top response shouldn't let you recheck. I feel you know, mm -hmm. like there's a lot of things you could just change one part of to make this way more balanced. Um, but it's a deck where you're almost never gonna check a one, and then as they go into your discard pile, your attacks will get a better stat pump than almost every other character. So there's like no shot that this is balanced, but you err on the side of caution and make things in a custom setting because the stronger it is the more appealing it is yeah. or the easier it is to be appealing so what numbers did we set on richard so let's go with four three point five five i think is where i probably land on that one fair enough uh... and yes Harry, i'm docking you a point for the name and you can't stop me <laughs> that uh... is, is right then we have Brett's Fire Fallows. Uh, it's a 32 health, 6 hander. Uh, at the start of your combat phase, add one character card from your discard pile to your momentum. This card gains all the that character's abilities until the beginning of your next turn. 
Your rival may challenge you to an arm wrestle to cancel this ability. If uh, your rival wins, the ability is cancelled and they draw one card. Uh, response after you play, uh, after you block with a character card, the attack deals no damage. Flip the attack after it resolves. Remove the character from the game during the end phase. Uh, enhance once per turn. You may search all areas for a character card and add it to your hand or discard pile. It's quite wordy. It's very wordy. Yeah. Uh, and I will exclusively play this card against Kai, who is a 13 year old child. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd probably beat you in the arm wrestle. He probably still would beat me in the arm wrestle. Yeah. Kids I was going to say, I don't know. I don't know how we feel about dexterity based, you know, real life cards. Um, I think that they're always like a cool, cute idea, especially like unofficial, you know, fake cards. Yeah. But I do always, there is always like this weird, you know, ableist pang in the back of my mind when I see physical, you know. I don't know where it's come from though. I never, I don't think I've challenged anyone to an arm wrestle. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah, sure. What... Aside, let's let's assume that doesn't exist, right? For a minute, like look at the rest of the the card. Mike, what's this actually doing? Yeah, uh, your character card, your character block, your buddy blocks become face shields, and and flips. So... And you get this grab one once per turn. Hmm. And... Um. I mean, the it, top it, ability is cool. It's it's again, it's that true form All Might style, like go pick your favorite Dobby. But this is any character. Yeah, that's the same. It's any so character I'm, on the symbol. So this is your you're now Toga, not Dobby. I mean, you're more closer to Quan Chi because you gain all that character's abilities. Or Monoma. Yeah. You're um, like you're fire, like in Quan Chi and Monoma. Yeah. You just gain all those notices for until the beginning of your next. So I get it for my turn and my opponent's turn. Yeah, I think um, this just doesn't seem like a super inspired design. It's like make Buddy Block really good because you need to have these characters in your deck anyways. And then once per turn, just go get one is like insane. So it's not mm -hmm. very balanced. And it's not super inspired either. It's um, not super. I don't know. Maybe it just needs to be more niche for me to feel it's inspired. But you know, we I've, have characters that are already kind of similar to this. And if you don't know where the whole arm wrestle thing comes from, I feel like that's where most of the flavor is. So, uh, as Matt said, the uh, the remove cost is isn't real because the once per turn just lets me go pick it back up anyway. Right, like there's just something about this where it was just your buddy blocks are insane and there's just not a whole lot else going on. You get to be any character you want with insane buddy blocks. Like, I, I don't know if you're like actually a shapeshifter in real life and that's where this comes from. No, but you know, it, it's, it's, one to me. It's, it's a cool, it is a cool concept sort of thing. Like I said, it's got nice flavor to it, uh, but. It do. I mean, it does feel. Uh, it doesn't have stats on face, but you can just run characters that give stats on face. You can just go a yeah. little bit nuts. This yeah. feels like a two, three, two from me. Uh, no offense to the person, but I'm going to put it as a one, as in like in capturing me. I don't feel like I'm an overly violent person that would challenge just challenge someone to an arm wrestle. <laughs> and I have no desire to be well, anybody. Violent. That I, might be. And I have no desire to like be anybody else. I'm quite comfortable in my own skin at the minute. So I think a one, two, three would probably be there because I would. I'd, I'd play this character at locals a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. I, it's probably above my uh, pay grade because I also just don't want to run twenty characters. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this like you can you can build a very unique deck with unique combinations, um, in it. But it's just so open ended. It's so free. Uh, Matt pointed out it's a cost to add the card to the momentum. I didn't realize it was in your momentum, and it doesn't say 
you can't not use it, you know. And it says you gain the abilities until the beginning of the next turn. Yeah. So you don't even you don't even lose the abilities if you spend the momentum. I mean, it it was definitely an attempt to do something unique, but it's just a little too strong overall and a little too generic. It's it's like giving me an open notebook when I wanted to read a story. I mean, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of, I think that top ability needs a little bit more balance for the for the opponents rather than just like the you had to draw a card. Like I'm reading all these abilities that instead of saying character card, I'm reading it's just Dobby, you know, just to make it fit like the Dobby guy theme. And even if we did that, like add one Dobby card. And, you know, after you block with a Dobby card and search all areas for a Dobby. Like, he, I don't know if that would even change the ratings I have. So even if you, you got know, rid of the, up. if you got rid of the entire top ability and just had the, the bottom two abilities of response after you block with a Dobby card, that attack deals no damage and flip it, remove the Dobby, and then had enhance, pick up a Dobby from any zone uh, and add it to your hand. That just basically means I have a zero mid block faith shield every turn. That's that is what it says. <laughs> that, is, that is, yeah, that's exactly what this says, and you can do it every turn. So yeah. you get every turn cycle, you get two face shield, plus zero face shield. So although it that's says six better. hander there, I'm an eight. I'm a thirty-two health eight hander, and two of those cards are zero mid block faith shields. It, it this puts hogs to shame. I think you would still lose to an errated younger Tiguro. Probably oh, would. Probably would still lose to an errated younger Tiguro. This is true. I don't. But it doesn't have stats on face. Yeah, exactly. Well, you get to copy younger Tiguro, so uh, you get to challenge someone to an arm wrestling contest for the right to be younger Tiguro. I guess. Uh, yeah, th these are these are twos all around. It was. It's one of those things where you you aimed too high. And gave yourself like too high of a bar to try and accomplish. I think so. I mean, kudos for the attempt, but it's it's very difficult to make something like this both interesting and useful. I think this next one is a reaction to my uh, younger to go protection video, where Mike Hardeman was destroying uh, younger to goers every time he saw them, and I put a video up saying that we need to protect them. Uh, this is Brett Dabby Guy. Uh, enhance free one younger to go from destruction. Response if a younger to go is destroyed, your opponent has to make an apology video. I mean, <laughs> uh... <laughs> I don't know. How to rate this necessarily? I, I don't think yeah. I don't think this one needs rating. I think it's just a very fun uh, play on one of the videos I've done. In the, uh, one of the I think it's just a three one one, right? Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a five one one because I legitimately put a video up uh, calling out <laughs> Mike for destroying younger to goers every time he saw them and asking people to protect them from destruction. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. I think this I could maybe give this a five on the playability <laughs> if people were still destroying younger to girls because I would want to make people I would want to force them to make apology video content. That would be that would be absolutely hilarious. Just like have I had official UBS of it having a special booth set up so people could just record yeah. and upload like YouTube shorts to the official YouTube of uh, their apologies. But then we have the same person's actual submission, which is... But wait, real quick. I just want to know, why did you get the trait of mean? You're the one freeing the younger Tagoros. Uh, I don't know why I got the trait of mean. Uh, maybe it's because they felt insulted because I spent the entire time complimenting... Hello? <laughs> what? Is that the, that, that, is that the, yeah, the next one is uh, Sal, isn't it? I don't know why we get called sellouts because we don't get paid for uh, being sellouts. <laughs> we shill... Yeah, don't you have to get paid to be a sellout? Isn't that what you're selling? Yeah, we shill out Card Goblin com for completely for free. It's uh, great. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so we got Brett Dabby Dude, 29 health, 6 hander, uh, Chaos Evil Void, which is cool symbols, uh, farm once per game, remove Dabby 1 from your deck or discard pile, gain all Dabby 1 abilities for the rest of the game, uh, maybe top 8 at the next event you play at. <laughs> <laughs> uh, farm once per game, remove Younger to go from your deck or discard pile, become a sellout for the rest of the game, lose all abilities on your character and gain all Younger to go abilities. Crush your child's oh, human being in the top why. eight. Okay, uh, yeah, so uh, the bottom ability is Crush your child's dream being in the top eight is because I lost round six, and if I'd w- uh, if I'd won round six, Kai, who's uh, like the, a 13-year-old player who's very, very good, got ended up being ninth because I uh, my strength schedule was stronger than his. But if I'd have won, he'd have been right. eighth. And uh, the, I get the... the Keyword uh, sellout because Guile at the EU regionals called me a sellout because I started off as the people's champ playing Dabby One when nobody expected it, and then in the most recent regionals, I was playing Younger Tagoro being a sellout and playing the meta. Correct. One hundred. These are fives all round. <laughs> this is this accurately represents you to a T. Uh, you get to play as Dabby One. And then you get to be as younger to Guru. I mean, especially after the errata, it's much more fair. And mm-hmm. as an added bonus, I get to crush a child's dream. Yeah. That's a five on the playability for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I like this one. It's funny. It's actually sort of functional, right? It's like I mean it, in some ways, from a balanced perspective, this it gets maybe a little not because actually the ability to pick between Dabby or younger to grow, like you know, seeing like at the beginning of the game, it's like, oh, Dabby's gonna be better here, or younger to grow is gonna be better here. It's probably not reasonable, like not un- an unreasonable, like un- unreasonably good thing to have. Um, uh, can I point out that the top it form says maybe top it event, whereas the bottom it one says I have to crush a child's dream. I have to do as much as I can. So when I play that form, I have to go. Have to. Yeah, it's not like crush your rival of child's dream. I have to go find a child in the event hall and crush their dream to carry on playing. Well, I think that there's enough children out there whose dream is that you don't top eight, so maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Oof. I just want to point out, actually, I think the most important thing is you can just do these in reverse order, and you can get younger to girls' abilities first, and when you get the Dobby abilities, it doesn't say you lose the younger to grow abilities. So if you have a redemption arc <laughs> where you are a sellout first and then you become the people's champion, you get the best of both worlds. I mean, I did do that. At, the, at my star championship, I played Dabby 1 on death, just using my younger to go list. Uh, but as as Tim Key pointed out with Endeavor Order and stuff like that, without Mob Strike, it's just no one here was fun. <laughs> Mob Strike just makes games fun. I'm so I'm really sad it left. Yeah, uh, this is cool. I like it. I mean, balance wise, I think it probably is like a three, right? Because it's sort of doing silly things. But... I mean, the fact that I can just go find one in my deck or discard just means that unless yeah. my opponent removes them, I just need to ruin one of each. So yeah, but like in terms of like you, I, I'd say at least it's at least a four. Like this feels like a four three four to me, but I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, four three four. I definitely play this at locals. I'd have a hell of a lot of fun playing at locals. Uh, mm. Nothing on here is incorrect. I like Dabby one abilities. I like top eight events. Uh, I like younger to go abilities. I like crushing child's dreams. I mean, you know, there's no lies detected on this card. Uh, the only my main issue with it is. I feel it should have been a 30 helper, so it was right smack in between Dabby 1 and uh, Younger to go. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, that would be funny. Uh, let's see, how many have we done so far? We've done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, The only 10, really 11, weird thing 12, is, 12, I don't 12, understand 12, 12, why this has the 12, void 12. symbol, but I'm not taking any points off for that. Because he loves the void symbol and played it. Like that's one of the, the symbols he's actually played, right? And yeah. Like, so uh, I've uh, never seen you play the void symbol in my life. You saw me play the void symbol out at Nats on midnight. No, I didn't watch that game. I played at the I played at the HLC as well. 
Because I had no inspiration to make anything else. That's what I'm going to play repeated Smash Midnight and just see how far I can go. Never in my life. Yeah, I, we, I talked about it last week. Oh, have uh, you ever played Midnight on the symbol where you can't side her into Dobby? Come on. No, but you could play. It was the fact I could play repeated Smash as like an 11 6 on my, as my first attack. Okay. <laughs> it's like that, that was the whole concept behind the deck of. That's dumb. No one turn two is stopping an 11 6. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, we were talking about this last yeah. week. Midnight 2 has Chaos, Death, and Void, and those are the three symbols I've topped eight with. So I now need to play that character. Uh, this is true. You, Matt, you, you, Sam does remember you playing Void more, Matt, than uh, me, because you featured quite a lot in his most recent video. <laughs> uh, now we, so we'll oh, is that is that the Matthew? That is Mr. Matthew Fontaine. Oh, I didn't know it was the same Matt. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. See, that's why we should just use internet names for everything in our real life. He's also going to shout at me for calling him Fontaine. When I sent when I sent him cards that one of my friends owed him, I specifically put a space between Fount and Tain, so he had to read his own name as Matthew Fontaine. Nice, I love that. <laughs> Rude. So yeah, how far are we are we through now, Brett? Uh, we are eighteen cards through. There's forty four total, which means if we do four more, we'll call it there, and then we'll come back on Tuesday to do the remaining half. Yeah, because it Who's is getting it? close to midnight, and we I wasn't. And this has been some decent, really decent ones. Uh, the next one hurts my soul to read the name. It is. Brett Pendragon, former that dabby guy. I don't know who made this, but that hurts. That really hurts. Uh, enhance once per turn. Add one card from your hand to the top of your deck. Add one card from your momentum to your hand. Response. Once per enhance phase. When you add a card to your hand, this attack gets plus one or minus one speed. Uh, response. At the start of your end phase, you may add one non-attack card to your momentum. Is that from your stage or from your card pool? Uh, pass. But just say at the start of the end phase, which means you can also do it in your opponent's turn, so I'm probably going to assume it's from the card pool. One, yeah. none. Well, a non-attack card. Actually, that's just a typo. Yeah, I think so, so when you add a card to your hand, it's text plus one, minus one speed. Okay, sure. Add one card from your hand to the top of your deck. Add one card and to your hand. Oh, looks like Sam's Discord has crashed. Um, yeah, uh, well, we'll try. We'll, I'll keep an eye and see if Sam does jump back in, but Discord just crashed. Uh, yeah, I don't know what this guy's. This one's trying to do. Um, uh, it's it's kind of like a utility kind of situation. Oh, there you are. Hmm. Drag Sam back in, and he's back. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. No worries. Uh... So what is one non-attack card? I mean, I mean it's going to be non. Oh, that makes sense. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess it's a case of uh, you can put actions and anti momentum or after you block, you just get to chuck something into momentum because you can just pick it up. Hmm. Interesting. I think the once per enhance phase is a little heavy. Minus one, plus one speed when you, you know, add a card to hand is... It can't be the most common thing you're doing, I right? Say, I mean, I know well, we have a lot uh, of cards on this, still. The symbols are all life water, which is really weird for me. Mm. Yeah, this doesn't feel like a you character. I mean, on all, you have now got Settling Old Debt, Chivalrous Competitor. Uh... Well, maybe they're thinking of, like, your personality. Like, maybe you have, like, a bubbly, watery, fluid, go-with-the-flow kind of personality. Rude. Because but... the symbols you play aren't necessarily, like, reflective of you, right? I mean, Chaos is pretty reflective of me, you know, honestly. Yeah, that one I get. That one is. <laughs> that's why I'm surprised it's missing the most. 
And it is weird that Richard's missing Void. Like, that is kind of weird. Oh, that's his air, sorry. It's air, life, water, so... Uh, yeah. I mean, light, I mean, they've all got decent draw power. Water has struggled with studies, and the ability to pick up a block and then go, your attack gets minus one speed because I picked up this block seems very fun. Yeah. This, uh, this, this design has a lot of really interesting things about it. I think it needs a kit to flesh yeah. out these ideas because by itself, it's not doing a lot other than the responses tutoring you something for later. Yeah, I mean, uh, we are going to default to judging it with what's available at the minute. But yeah. Like I so said, this is doing interesting things, right? And just sort of manipulating that, you know, confirming a check, getting something from my rent into my hands, I'm maybe adding an attack back to my hands, so I'm drawing my momentum and I'm confirming a check, or and then that gives me that speed plus one minus one speed on maybe on the current attack or you know on yours. And then um at this you know the I'm I'm gonna assume that the response is from the card pool yeah. that you get to add some to your momentum. So you're always getting that kind of things that you will cycle through. Like this this feels like an interesting design. I just don't know where that fits for Brett, to me. Yeah, and, and I think it matters a lot where that card comes from, and I'm with you, I just don't know, because right now as it reads, it's from any zone, or at least the stage primarily, but I think yeah. it's supposed to be this card pile. Yeah. If, if it was, so if that mean, was this card pile, be card. nuts. You could add any card from your discard pile to your, ha to your momentum, and then add that to your hand, that would be a little nutty. Well, it takes a while, right? Because you have to do the response at the start of the end phase, and then you have to do your whole once per turn enhance on it, you know? And it doesn't add... It's not plus. You're not getting hard advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, at, being able to stack your deck is theoretically better than card advantage, I think. But it is not strictly card advantage, so... Mm -hmm. Um... You know, it's 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 very very cool, but it does seem a little out of place. I'm like on a, I'm like on a two four, three point five maybe. Yeah, I mean, I I I'd almost say like a one four three. That's sort of where I think I'd land on it. Uh, I'd go, again, I'd, I don't feel like where this fits with Brett. I I would go with two because I do like mm. my momentum manipulation. Uh, mm -hmm. I did it a lot with Dabby One. That was a, a big like part of my win conditions for like, when I played Dabby One was cool student and stuff like that. Uh, struggling with studies, one of my favorite foundations. Uh, get getting speed reduction off using that enhance as well would be just absolutely great. Uh, so I would put that as a two because it does capture a little bit of my play style. Uh, that bottom one is just a little bit. Uh, it is a little bit crazy to me. Uh, right, let's get on to next one, which hopefully we'll get a Richard. We haven't had a Richard in a while. Uh, we've got Richard the Sayer of Meh, a 19 health 7 hander with enhanced once per turn. This attack get if this attack deals damage, real X cards from the top of your deck, select one card from them and remove it from play. You may play the selected card from your remove from game area as the next card you play, but the remaining cards put the remaining cards on the bottom of your deck in any order. X equals the damage dealt. Uh, response once per turn after you make a check, discard momentum. That check gets plus X. X is what is the control of the discarded card. Okay, so. I deal four damage. I get to look at the top four and play the next, play one of those four as my next form. Uh, who's Mr. McGinn again? That's Harry. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, we've, I... got, we've I... done Harry's. Oh, this is me... one of the more interesting of the Yakuza oh, no, style we... design. We, mm. ha we haven't done Harry's yet. Harry's is number 10, which is... Oh, then that must have been Gary that we uh, did yes. it. Yeah, we've done Gary's. Uh, Harry's, will Harry's is like 
one of the last ones that will get done. Even okay. though he's one of the first people to do it. And then response once per turn, after you make a check, discard a momentum. This check is plus X, where X is the control of the discarded card. Okay, so we're likely getting plus three to a check once per turn for momentum. That's fine. With like a huge payoff if you do tutor like other stuff in there, so that's cool. Mm. Get a six check into your momentum, that's insanely good. Yeah. I mean, it's a minimum of plus one with Stormlights. Yeah, again, obviously, this just hasn't gone round of you know, this hasn't gone to the one check thing, right? This is again doing an interesting thing, so similar to, to Brett's one, like this is like an interesting design. Um, it's just a case of again where that fits with me is what i'm thinking like from a power level perspective like you know you know you hit with something and now you're an eight hander that seems pretty powerful um and you know check hacking is is nice like being able to get plus to your checks by you know to find that momentum seems pretty good obviously not giving stats but you are that seven hander um yeah is is I, I think the only thing really missing here is the I don't know where this order symbol is kind of coming from <laughs> mm. on these cards. Um, it seems like a kind of a random. I feel like if order was just evil, the symbol spread would make sense because you've mm. got like the play a card from somewhere else kind of a theme yeah. going. And the new Godzilla cards have like evil cares about removing cards from the game as like a sub theme. Mm -hmm. So, you know, remove like King Ghidorah does that, right? He removes it and then he plays it. And I think the the five hander who gains a bunch of health like does the same thing. He like reveals, removes it, then plays it. So um there's a lot of cool stuff going on. And it's I think, yeah, you can use it defensively, right? It's this attack deals damage. So you can take a hit to like search for a, a better card, and um, yeah, I like a lot true. of what's going on. At least it has I'm just... ones. Yeah, yeah. And I guess I'm you can not... use that response on on offense and defense, right? So yeah, yeah. I just I'm not sure where to put the the flavor on it, but I, I feel pretty good about this being like a two four four. It's yeah, strong, but I, I think, think that's where I land on actually as a two four four. Like, I think there's a bit there for me, but not too much. But I, I really like what's going on. It doesn't feel overpowered, um, and I think there's interesting stuff there. Um, but yeah, I think I, I'm I happily go with a two four four. Yeah, you're you're you get no stats on face, but you get that extra card, which historically hasn't been enough. But you get to play that extra card by having momentum, mm -hmm. which I think is the biggest difference is the check bonus means you'll almost certainly get to play the mm -hmm. card, you know, the extra card that you generate. Um, so, yeah, I, I dig this one a lot. Just, you know, swap order for evil, I think. Uh, next one should be a quick di discussion one. It's uh, Richard Plummer. Six hander, twenty nine health with the glorious host ability. Commit your rival heals five health. You draw three cards. And the symbols are don't know enough about the game yet. Sorry. Okay. Uh, well, this seems very. Sweet. I'm going to assume this is Dash Cable, one of the like newer players that watches. Yeah. So this is a, a chap who joined us on our anniversary stream, who is very new to the game, and you know we were very. No, I tried to be as you know as useful as I liked, but um, Japan. This, yeah. this is this is giving me fresh cut grass vibes. Yeah, I mean, you know, here them for five drawing three sometimes is gonna be okay. Um, I mean the only the only cost is commit, so if your opponent's at full health, you just draw three cards. Mm hmm Right. So this is like a classic control trade off like alternate win condition looking deck so it's actually surprisingly interesting um in terms of how would you build a deck like this right where every time you want to draw three cards you know you're 
you're dealing less damage overall, but five is not a lot to overcome, so it yeah. still feels pretty strong. I mean, um, this would definitely have life, life, right? If we're thinking about symbols to this, it would definitely be life. I think that feels like a very life ability. I can, I don't know, certainly just I'm trying to think about what it might be as a three symbols. So uh, the three symbols, the, the most derivative and easy way to think about it to me is the all symbols historically the draw cards symbol. Mm -hmm. Life would be the healing symbol, even though it's not healing you, I think that would still count. And then yeah. order is the symmetrical effects um, symbol. And while this isn't strictly symmetrical, it's benefiting both players and it's the play fair symbol. So I think that that kind of counts. Yeah, yeah, if all it, life order seems seems reasonable here. If it had order, you could yeah, play plus good. you could play plus ultra prominence burn, and if they go into deadlock, you can just drop the uh, you can't your opponent can't gain health ability. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> there might be um there might be a card that punishes your rival for gaining health, not based on if it's their effect or not. Because that is like a very weird thing for your effect to gain them health, but you know, I'll say I'm surprised by how much the design is making me think. But I'm a I'm a guy who's a big fan of alternate win conditions and you know, kind of stalling things out and not really attacking anyways. Like I like to play the game a different way, so I feel like I'm probably going to score this a lot higher than you guys. But you know, I, I don't know about the host mentor teacher part of it, but mm. in terms of being ambassadors for the game, I can put this as like a four, four, four point five. I mean, I, I, okay. think... I, I would I was going to go for a three, four, four. That's sort of where I think I land on it. Uh, like, in fact, mm... Let's go with a three, three, four. We're gonna, I'm gonna dock it a point in that middle because that hasn't got the symbols. Uh, um, if, yeah. if yeah, uh, what you said about alt win conditions. I think if this oh. had like a kit and it and the uh, like the Richard Pommy you are just had like uh, enhanced. If your opponent has gained their starting health total or more this game, you win the game. Hmm. I would, I would have it be something like if we're both at full health. And both players have cycled. Hmm. You win the game because then it's like I'm healing you, but I have to stay topped off. That's pretty difficult. And yeah. then I have to, you know, drawing three cards, I'll burn through my deck really fast. And if I survive long enough to force you to cycle, then I can win. I, I've always thought that idea would be. Cool. And if you drop the life symbol, of it, you can use things like Ned. Uh, you can use Spiral Blast, Rejuve. Uh, yeah, that's super cool. See, shape that would give you a reason yeah. to attack. <laughs> Immortal shapeshifter to keep both foundations and healing. And yeah, no, I, I yeah I could see that kind of thing. Of like if both players have uh, X percentage of health total and, and have cycled, you win the game. Yeah, it's a very very simple design, but actually yeah. there's a lot there, right? So it, yeah, I think I think a three three four is where I land on this one. I think uh, yeah. I think Sam's right. We should have had like kits also designed for these kind of things because a lot of these feel like they are just missing kits from being scarred a lot higher it doesn't, it doesn't matter like you know i don't think not everyone would have gone and bothered to do the kits right i think just having yeah, the, most people are gonna do just having the full kit anyways. just having the option um, there would have been good i think i think the best idea going forward is nick's dlc idea where you get a character, a foundation, or you know, character and attack and a non-attack. Yeah, like a mini, just a mini kit, so I think. Yeah, just give them, just flush them out a little bit, so you can be like, because the the thing that's interesting about character cards, let's be real, is how they interact with the rest of your deck. It's mm -hmm. not themselves, you know. When the character does everything as the character, it's super boring. Uh, last one we'll do for today is. Uh, Lord Dabby with this streamer uh, trait. This only has the chaos symbol. 28 alpha, 6 hander, enhanced destroyer on foundation. Your next check to block, uh, your, your next check to block this attack gets plus 2. Uh, enhance uh, once per turn, flip on foundation. If this is your rival's third or greater attack, it's combat phase, add one card from your capital to your hand. And response once per turn, flip on foundation. After your rival plays an attack, change its zone to high. Uh, yeah, this is just 
basically a three love... cards you really like. Yeah, this is basically just a love letter to cards I've played yeah. in the past. With the bottom response being uh, last yeah. May when I played the infinite combo ice light tackle uh, trick. Then you got the well, struggle yeah, with it's, studies. It's release struggle with studies infinite potential, right? Uh, double jab pummel. Oh uh, yeah, it release a double jab. Yeah, release. Yeah, release. So yeah, release. Struggle studies and. Uh, infinite, infinite potential. potential. The, the three cards are kind of forced until the, mm. they got uh, cycled out. I still force infinite I mean, potential. They were the it. three. <laughs> Those are pretty much the three strongest defensive tools on chaos. Yeah, that's why I, I think that's I mean, it... by you, you being forced to play only chaos with this character. Like infinite potential wasn't included in non Tokoyami chaos deck. I just only played it. I played it in Dinky One when I played Dinky because I'm like, well, plus one eye blocks are my best block mods. Um, I don't remember much from last year's gameplay, but it stayed into my mind is my stream game against Grant when I dropped when he played Jolt and I went infinite potential and he went, oh, it's gonna be like that, is it? I went, yeah, it's gonna be like that because he knew I had the ice light tackle in hand. I think I saw that. I think I saw that play, and that was. Yeah, that that's the good stuff, man. That's where I don't know. I'm a, I'm a combo guy. It oh, takes yeah. at least two cards working together for me to be interested. Yeah, I've got, I've, I'm, I'm, uh, it's one of those things that I talk about. Like, uh, I've played Magic for a fair few years, and this game is so weird because in Magic, if you had to use two cards to stop one, you felt bad. But in this game, like, if I got infinite potential into Ice Slide Tackle, I feel so good. Just going, yeah, my it, it finally paid off. So yeah, that's the thing. In Magic, I feel good when I do the two-card combo because it usually has some upside and, you know, it's it, it makes me feel good because I had a situation arise that I planned for, but it's not a winning strategy by any means and no. you end up losing doing that. So, you know, it is very, very different. Um, Balance-wise, though, this gets a one. There's no <laughs> shot that's in balance. Yeah. This is the most defensive character that's ever been printed. I mean, it doesn't have draw power on face, it doesn't have stats on face for attacks. It's got release on face and infinite struggling with studies on face. It's not balanced. Yeah, it's got struggling with studies once per turn, every turn forever. The Which only thing that you could do to make this character better defensively is slap the Momo tutor on it. I mean, yeah. I, think the, I think the biggest thing about it is once they play their third attack, you flip one, then destroy the flip one, which means you just get to keep replacing it with face up ones. Yeah, no, this is this is unbalanced as hell. This now, a, would I take this to a local? That's a five. So I think this is a five yeah. one five because this is highlights from the best decks I've, from like my best defensive strategy I played last last year. Uh, it's a one because it's a three one five. No, well, no, this is. Uh, this is the name of the character is Lord Dobby. This is so far from what Dobby does. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a three on the representation. I'd say maybe. I think maybe. I think I'm thinking like a. For me, it'd be, it'd be like a four one five or four one four. I'll go with four one five. If this, if this was named like Mina, so it was actually based on the Mina while I was doing all this shenanigans, then yeah. But I mean, the the all three of these cards are cards I played in Dobby one as well. This was my defensive strategy. Yeah, but it's not evocative of Dobby. It's no, not Dobby. what Dobby does. Dobby's not very big on self-preservation. This is true. Uh, oh. I'm still disappointed. Last year, I didn't get to Barrier Shield, the Double Jab Pummel. It's up. It's on my bingo list. It will never get done. But I did manage to show down a Runaway, which made me very happy this year. Nice. I've not gotten to do either of those things yet either. <sighs> but I have had it. I have had... Um, my own double jab barrier shielded, so it has oh. happened to me. So that should be halfway through now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a great one to end on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously this has gone on probably a little longer uh, than we expected. In all, uh, in in all of honesty, this is probably my top contender for the one I'd want to make at the minute, because this is just great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my god. Uh, Bit, uh, just, power. just so you know, Sam, I am actually going to get these made up and printed out. 
Nice. Uh, I'm, I'm commissioning some art as well. I just need to actually. I just sent them pictures of uh, Richard, but they asked me to pose for it. <laughs> uh, would you like to shill out the channel when you stream and uh, and whatnot? Yeah. So I still I haven't been able to nail down a um, steady streaming schedule, unfortunately, and. I've just been focused on this HLC video that came out this morning um, that I did link in the chat already for Matt. Um, so I've, I've just been like, it took me so, so long to do that. I've been focused on that more than streaming, but I'm trying to nail down Wednesdays as sort of like the replacement night for the Wednesday webcam weekly, try mm -hmm. to kind of fill that gap, that void. Um, and then Fridays and Saturdays are also probably a good time to catch me streaming um the only way you'll really know for sure is if you join the discord though because i always post in the announcements and i should have the tamarin cardwell webcam regional edit done much sooner than the five months it took me on the hlc so i mean it was only three months because so, it was yeah. in february wasn't it so yeah thanks so yeah, much for like that, yeah big, big shout out sam uh did you mind have you actually finished Baldur's gate free yet I, yeah, I finished Boulder's Gate. I did not finish it on the the hardcore difficulty though. I forget which one what they call it. Oh no, um, yeah. Because I was, I think it's still on a stream clip, but I was running into a glitch on an elevator where my characters falling to their death and oh. only one would survive. And after like fooling with that for forty minutes, I went, I'm not having fun at this level of pressure anymore. Like if I'm if I'm battling the game mechanics, like that's not fun. So yeah, I, it, uh, I'm taking a big break from that. Was that in the Gauntlet of Shah? Yes, yes, it was. Yeah, so it I, took I, me like... yeah, I had the same issue. Like Shadow Heart was just on the edge of the lift, so like the lift movie, she just fell to her death, and then there was nothing you could get out from there. Uh, but I found a I found a fun exploit for the Gauntlet of Shah as well. If you're ever interested, where you can just skip it. <laughs> oh, nice! I might look that up later if I. You know, I'm, I'm past it now in that playthrough, and I do intend to someday finish it, but I already had to deal with glitches on the Forge boss, and yeah. I've had to, I spent like an hour, like, just resurrecting characters at Withers, and then stealing the gold bag, and then, you know, doing the lift again, and losing a different character, and like, it was like, this, you know the riddle where it's like you have like a fox, a hen, and like some corn, and it's like you can only take one of them and like they keep dying and respawning back on the other side. So I just I took a, a break. <laughs> oh, that's right. Rich is getting the face that I had last time when Tim Kim uh, Tim Keith was on, they were talking about Genshin. <laughs> yeah, I was really about to say. I'm really once now to sidetrack by talking to one of our, our gracious <laughs> guests about video games. So um, yeah, big shout out to Sam, uh, amazing commentator for the official UBS events. Can't wait to uh, see you back for the Season two regionals. Hopefully you'll be back. Yeah, so go check out Ace Maneuvers on Twitch and on YouTube and obviously join his Discord and send us some love over that way. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us, Sam. Much appreciated. Obviously we didn't manage to get me. I had a blast. Yeah, we didn't manage to get through everything. Um so we will uh, reconvene on Tuesday. Obviously if you're about Sam and Wilma can join us, obviously appreciate time zones and all that means it's uh it can't, um, but obviously if you can, that's yeah, really if I can figure out the time for an issue, absolutely. It's um, mm -hmm. normally Tuesdays I have Dungeons and Dragons, but we we've had like two weeks off, so um, I'm planning to do the Unfun Fridays uh, practice night. I know we had to change the name. I don't know what I'm allowed to call it anymore without getting kicked off the team. Um, but I should be streaming alongside Tam Cardwell Tuesday night, so. Ah. Depending on where we can schedule that in the afternoon, I would love to be here. Yeah, cool. just let us know because I know Connor from the Dubbers is interesting in as well. He's been, he's been streaming all day today as well. But yeah, just let us know if you're available. It'd be the same time, like 4 p.m. EST on Tuesday. So you're welcome to do what you did like, like today. Just jump on whenever you, you can get on. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna leave it there because it is 10 to midnight, and I gotta get up for school. We we'll for the school room. Yeah. Uh, again, so yeah, thank you everyone in chat for joining and obviously everyone on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. Do all the like, subscribe, comment things, really helps. And we will uh, catch you on Tuesday. All right. Goodbye.